1973, Coldlands Hope and Despair. Uh, last session, our split up party was split between half the group was still in the astral slash limbo plane. The other half went back to Mucklestones. Uh, back in the astral plane, uh, Brevin uh, finalized marking the runes on the portal and brought you guys basically into the, the plane of limbo. Um, when you guys first stepped through, he went through first, he was missing, but did he step through second, as I recall, and was able to kind of repel the giant mudslide that you guys basically walked into? Um, while you were in there, you guys tried to search to find Brevin, couldn't find for a couple seconds, but I think, Diddy, you cast something on the portal so you knew, could tell where it was. Is that correct? Yeah, locate okay. object. All right. And as he did that, as you guys were moving, he could sense that the portal itself was actually moving away from them. So you guys headed back to the portal. You found Brevin. Long story short, bada bing, bada boom. You guys marked all your spots. Everybody except for Dr. P, since he, <laughs> gave, his, he gave his away to the dragon. But you guys all marked your spots with the, uh, with the potions and then headed back through. There wasn't anything else major that happened while you guys were in limbo, correct? Uh, I gave him the doll. I think he dropped it there so he can still he mark something that he knows. Right. Yeah. It was, I thought it was uh, leaving a message for yeah. like, so. <laughs> you were, yeah, We were going all over the mountain. You guys say things mountain, if anybody right? gets caught. Yeah. So on that, yeah. on that vein, because I can't remember, I don't, I don't have it in my notes. So what was the trigger for the doll to actually do or say anything? Uh, approaching oh. and it was like they're going that way or we're going this way okay i, I don't know i gave it to dr peter chinty so uh i don't know it's he he would have set the password oh that's right because he had to attune to it yeah and you guys weren't there long enough for him to attune to it because as you recall the uh the the sphere that you're able to hold back with your brain power did he was starting to kind of collapse as Brevin yeah. redid the the portal you guys stepped through so, yeah. te technically, Dr. P didn't get enough chance to attune to it, so he wouldn't be able to set anything up for that. All right, then I would have probably just dropped it and just made it, kept saying, I'm not here, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so, as if you get close enough, it'll just say, I'm not here. So, you, you would have, the trigger would have been someone approaching it, right? Yeah, anyone within 30 feet of it, it just sort of says, I'm not here. <laughs> okay, and that's all it says, so I'm you, not here? <laughs> Yeah, or oh, I'm not here, go away. I think I can use six words. Oh, I'm not here, go away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that'll come in handy somewhere, maybe. All right, so you guys pass back through the uh, the portal, and you guys uh, started making your way uh, back uh, towards the the gate that took you back into the, the Mucklestone gate. On the flip side of that, the, the group that was in Mucklestones, again, I'm going off memory, guys, so oh, correct me if I get wrong. I can tell you. I remember. So you guys, first thing first, you guys, uh, the whole crowd inside there kind of freaked out. No, that was the last session. Last The, the last session, you guys were going to the keep. You were looking for Jodell. Jodell was not there. Kudwar told you that Jodell had gone on to find some of the other portals uh, throughout the area and that you guys were to continue on to meet him either in Yeshomar or uh, where else did I say? Was it Mucklestones or was it Yeshomar? It was Yesh uh, Yeshomar. That's what I thought as well. Okay, he told you guys to meet him at Yeshomar, but you guys wanted to head back to the astral plane to try to find your friends that you left behind. And I think Toman was quite vocal, kind of somewhat blaming Silith for leaving them all behind. But <laughs> but uh, Kudwar led you guys back through the Mucklestones, and it was like a middle of the night. So as I recall, you guys did not take any kind of a a long rest. Is that correct? Uh, no. Okay, not even a short rest, as I recall. Nope. Look at my HP. Still down. Okay. All right. So, Cudwell led you guys down to the basement, blindfolded you still, took you along the path to Mucklestones, and you guys were able to go back through the gate and were making your way per Tolman's recollection. Yeah, I think he rolled pretty, pretty well, so he's able to kind of be your leader, so to speak, to try to retrace the steps that Brevin took uh, that would lead you to the, the little portal gate that went to Limbo. Yep. Uh, okay. The other group that was heading back uh, to Mucklestones, basically, you guys made it, I think, to the the large mountain range, and I can't remember what, what was the reason why okay. you guys headed south, below, underneath it instead of over it. Our DM thought it would be funny. No, there was something moving. Oh, did you and guys we went towards it? That's right. There were there were two uh, uh, squid. You guys thought they were just octopus ships, right? But Brevin was with you guys, and he told you that they were probably uh, mind flare ships. 
Does that sound does that sound right? And that's why you yeah, guys right. yeah. that's why you guys yeah. took the southern route under the mountains to kind of avoid them because Brevin said there's no way you guys could handle two uh, two mind flare ships. So. Yeah, Preston's like, what's a mind flare? <laughs> <laughs> The other group that was heading from Mucklestones to the astral uh, of the Limbo Gate through the astral plane also noticed those those ships, but they didn't. I don't think they rolled high enough to know they were mind flare. They just thought they were like two giant octopus or squids or something. Usul, Somebody started throwing weasels at him. Yeah, Usul pulled like out of his tan bag of tricks or tan bag of animals a giant hyena, a giant weasel, and told him to go fetch. Basically, so they went towards the ships. While well, the rest of you guys tried to hide your way or sneak your way past them. Uh, as far as you guys know, those ships went after the two creatures. And you guys were making your way towards the mountain range. We made it to the mountain range. We were going over it, though. Right, because you guys saw some movement on some kind of little island to the underside of the mountain range. You guys wanted to avoid that, so you guys went over the mountain range, hiding from the two ships. Whereas the other group were going underneath. They saw the same thing. Supposedly, I just gave that away. The same thing on the little island moving around. They chose to go after it. <laughs> so, like two ships passing in the night. You guys are going on opposite sides of this mountain range and have no idea where the other one is. So, the group that went underneath went to investigate. They saw a small island with like a little circle of zombies going around in circles. Um, there really was no need for them to investigate, but they did anyway. Diddy and, went Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, Diddy went Leroy yeah. Jenkins, popped right yeah, in the like, middle, it, killed two of the zombies right off the bat, and then bam, he got freaking annihilated, lit up, ripped up, whatever you want to call it. And Diddy confirmed before this session that he went down in the first round. <laughs> so from that point forward, I think everybody else pretty much kept their distance, started shooting like at range. I think Corn tried to get a little bit closer. He got pummeled with a bunch of spikes. Tried Still, to save Diddy. Tried to save Diddy, that's right. And then Sylvia came up and used telekinesis to basically lift Diddy's you know, dying body out of the swarm of zombies and whatever the hell was underneath the earth. Got him out of there. Thanks, uh, Quorn fell. And then someone, I can't remember who it was, the resurrected him. It could have been Dr. P that did that. Can't remember exactly. Someone resurrected him just as he was getting ready to get pummeled with a bunch of more spikes. And ha, huh, he remembered that he had this feet where he can like deflect missiles. And Although I didn't realize at the time, I know I didn't I know. realize that it was the missile that you'd been sending, because like I thought it was just the like the vines or whatever it was whipping with. It's like no, that's a missile. I was like, what? Right, right. So that saved him because he was he came really close to basically getting pummeled while he was still dead. So he survived. After he got away, I think the rest of the group said "f this," and they they all flew away. But Sylvia did throw a fireball into the middle of the the zombies once everybody was out. Killed a bunch of zombies. The little monster kind of came up to the surface. And got shot a few more times. And it went back underneath the earth. And all the rest of the zombies that were left just dropped. Like a bag of rocks. And then they said, F that. And they all started to leave or flee. And I think... And then we all gained a level. <laughs> no. No. Did not gain a level. You did not pass go. You did not collect $200. <laughs> you did not get your hit points back. So. Yeah, I, I was going up there and reading it. it was uh, Spike Morden Snare. I thought it was like stabbing me with its vine tentacle things, but you said it was actually shooting like thorns or stuff. No, Diddy got to feel what that was all about. Those vines came out of the ground yeah. and kind of basically went between his armor and to his legs and was like seeping into him. And it was, it was yeah, quite painful for him. <laughs> Diddy says, oh, I enjoyed it because it was nature. <laughs> what are you doing, Druids? <laughs> I'm an ancient prayer fellow. Fair enough. <laughs> Sort of a bit of a mix of both. All right, so any questions? Anything else I might have missed from that last session, you guys? Um, okay. right. I'm sorry, say again, Rand? I thought that they noticed, the other party noticed us at the end of the last session, or uh -huh. that there was some chance of rolling to figure out if we <laughs> saw each other under an that was a nice try, but no, that didn't happen. <laughs> were you being serious or were you joking? I'm serious. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I swear I thought you said, like, roll perception check to see if you notice the other party. And I thought someone rolled pretty high. I'll scroll back and see if it's on there. I don't see any perception checks. Nope. No, as I recall, there was something else you guys might have seen, but no one rolled uh, perception high enough. Now, now, okay. I'm not, now, I'm not going to say if that was the party or what that might have been, but 
I remember there was some perception rolls, and no one got high enough to see what I think you might have saw. <laughs> All right. Game on. I see none by the end of the night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to pick up here in Mucklestones. And this is where the majority of the party, I got, I'll call it the non silith party at this point. <laughs> and Silith, you, you want to keep playing as Corinth right now until he shows up? Or, I mean, you got options of playing as, um, uh, who else is not here in this party group? Is that it? Just Corn? Uh, Asul? Oh, no, Asul's with the other. Yeah, Asul's with the other. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess Corn's your only option. I don't want to kill Corn. <laughs> Well, don't kill him then. You'll be fine. All right, so I put all your, uh, okay. your tokens down in this general area down here. I guess that would help if I get on the right layer so you can see my ping. So this is DM Fiat. We're now back because we weren't back, right? Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm getting way ahead of myself. You guys were still in the, uh, the Astro Plane. Okay. All right, so let me switch back to that map then just for theater of the mind purposes. Uh, what is this monk, monk, wire, lizard. All right, slotty. So here we go. You're back in the astral plane here. I got you guys all down here towards the bottom. Oh yeah. So you guys have just left yeah. the the island of where Diddy and Corn almost died, and Brevin is still leading you guys on your way uh, back where he believes the gate uh, should be. Kind of jumping around from boulder to boulder, still keeping an eye out for the. Uh, uh, the Mind Flayer uh, ships. So just tell me how you guys are going about. I mean, Brevin's going to uh, recommend you guys go stealthily. So it'll be kind of half pace. He'll be keeping an eye out, but I'm assuming the rest of you guys can do the same thing. Yep. Leading uh, uh, eye. Hold on a minute. Okay. J just e erase from your memory what you see on that map. I just not realize that. So I can erase them. You didn't see anything on that map, right? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's go back over to this map here. Hoppy uh, Rock. Bing. <laughs> Bing. There we go. There's your astral plane. That's you guys. So we're theory of the mind right now until something else happens. Damn DM. <laughs> All right, so you guys are making your way through, like I said, and Brevin's still kind of telling you guys to kind of keep an eye out, be uh, somewhat stealthy. Any other thing else you guys want to do here? Oh, I better knock down a potion. Healing. I'm going to... <laughs> what is... Yeah, Professor P started off. I need everybody to do a stealth check if you are trying to be stealthy as you're following Brevin. Oh, yeah. That's because he's a okay. So, um, <laughs> you guys are all making your way, kind of going from boulder to boulder, a little floating island to floating island, and did he like he like darts out from behind something and kind of stands there like he's looking around, like he's behind something, but he's not. And you guys all watch as he kind of keeps doing this over and over again, like he thinks he's, like, <laughs> smaller than what he really is. But uh, he's he's way out in the open. Now, give me a uh, perception check. I'm, I'm just... Okay. Yeah, like, Diddy, Diddy and Buttercup are around. using the same method. <laughs> if he... Can't see you. You can't. <laughs> okay, is that everybody with their perception? Uh, Sylvia. Sylvia, you want to give me a perception? Kev. There we go. Right, so I think that's everybody. All right, Brevin also. <laughs> yeah, Buttercup's going to do a good perception check there as well. Just about as good as uh, uh, it's a her, right? Just as good as Twigs. Yeah. 
So you guys make your way, and Brevin's kind of like <laughs> leading you guys from site to site, and he's kind of shaking his head every once in a while as he watches Diddy try to hide behind nothing. Buttercup right behind him. Twig right behind him as well. Like they're all like they're all trying to hide behind each other for some reason. But uh, Brevin just kind of keeps a lookout, shakes his head, but it keeps motioning you guys forward. He doesn't seem to uh, notice anything in the distance. So this goes on for probably a couple hours before uh, you guys start watching him slow down. You see Brevin kind of look one way and, and look the other way. And he turns back to you guys as you're behind one of the boulders as the, uh, the gate's moved. That's not that uncommon, but uh, I can still find it. Just just be patient with me. And you guys watch as he kind of crawls up next to one of the boulders and kind of sits in somewhat like a, a yoga pose, so to speak, and he closes his eyes for a minute. And he just goes silent. And he sits there silent for uh, one minute passes. Like he lost. Two minute passes. This goes on for about four or five minutes. And he finally like opens his eyes up. Says, okay, I've got it. I know where it is. We're not too far away. And he'll lead you guys off in a different direction. But he also tells you guys you're going to be out in the open for quite a bit. And uh, before he does this, he tells you guys that the gate will sometimes move and uh, just because of the nature of the gate and of the astral plane itself, it does occasionally move, but he can still be able to pick up its sense of, of where it's at. Did he? Did you also do the same thing to that gate, or was that just the one in limbo? Uh, just the just the one in limbo. I put I the light the gate object on. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you guys finally, you know, make your way out in the open. There's really no way of hiding or stealthing when you're out in the open like this. And everyone give me a perception check, please. Do they can actually perceive? Yeah, very nice. I like that. All right, so Rand, Sylvia, and Corrin. Did everyone roll? Okay. I think it's cool. It roll. What's his face? Brevin. No, oh, yeah, I'll roll for him. But you guys already rolled, so you're going to see what he sees. Yeah, he definitely sees it. All right, so as you guys are making your way, you guys can see off in the distance behind where you came from uh, something that looks. You're not sure if it's a, a large dragon. It's some kind of a large winged beast making its way towards you guys. And Brevin points out that it's not Xerxes. Alright, this is So at that point, Brevin is going to say to hell with being sneaky. We need to book our ass over there. I need everybody to give me an athletics or an acrobatics check. Okay. Wow. Average roll. I thought it is ruled by your mind, Brian. <laughs> oh, Sylvia. <laughs> All right, uh, you guys. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh. All right, so you guys all kind of focus on your minds on the air. That's how you move through here. And you guys are just hauling ass out there. And a couple of you look back, and you'll see that Sylvia and Buttercup are, are starting to trail behind you guys. Like, they're roughly about 60 feet behind you guys. And you'll see the large thing off in the distance getting bigger uh, coming towards you guys. Any reactions you guys want to do before I have you roll again? Sylvia, anything, anything you want to do to try to catch up? <laughs> uh, um, I'm sure hard about how I'm going. Does that work? <laughs> yeah, this is straight up Matrix right now. <laughs> you got to know you're faster. Uh. Anybody else can have a reaction as well if there's something they think they can do to help Sylvia and Buttercup catch up. Shoot a, 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 a 
I'm sorry, you broke up on me, Rand. What'd you say? <laughs> Dr. P is going to shoot an adrenaline. <laughs> just... at, at who? <laughs> He's poking up the bear. <laughs> All right, just... roll. Go ahead and roll to hit. I guess... Out of a pack. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> Does he actively dodge? Well, no, she didn't actively dodge, but... First off, her arm... And then... Hour? Alright, guys. I gotta try to... <laughs> Something else. You guys are all breaking up on me. Is it just me, or... You guys hearing the same thing? Clear. Must... Fine. Something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm only getting like two or three words. Hold on one second, guys. I may uh, restart my router here. All right. I know it's not me because I upgraded my internet to this hand. What do you got? Two, you got two. Two yeah. whole hamster is one. I went real fast. No, I, I specifically. By the. Uh, by Axe Hams. <laughs> so I, I missed. I missed what he said. What, what do we see floating or what? One of these uh, ships? Hey. Dragon like figure. Mm. Winged figure. Black cat. And Brevin's like, you should leave. We should run. So obviously, it's probably not something. All right, guys, I'm back. Somebody try to say something. Welcome to fix back. That. Are you new and improved? Hey, that sounds much better. I can actually hear a sentence out of someone. All right, so I don't know how much I missed. Cool. You guys heard me fine. So what were you guys doing? I understood like someone was shooting and drilling dart at somebody. I wasn't sure if it was at, it was at Buttercup or if it was at. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Professor Professor P shot an adrenaline dart at Buttercup at the same time, not knowing what the Professor was doing. Twig has pulled a stake out faster. Do whatever works. Only problem is Twig's dart kind of bounced off her armor. <laughs> okay. And what was uh, Sylvia doing? Thinking uh, real hard about going fast. She was thinking really hard about going fast. Okay. All right, and that misses uh, Buttercup as well. All right, so you, Dr. P tries to shoot on, over it. Go ahead. So what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to use a sorcery point, and I am going to – hang on. I just, I haven't, sorry, I haven't played uh, her in a while. Here's in here. When you cast a spell that targets only one creature. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one sorcery point 
And I am going to... Is it one sorcery point or how many is it? Anyways, I'll figure out that. And uh, I'm going to cast haste on myself and butter. Ah, okay. That might actually work. That doesn't require, you know, to hit. That's just like an automatic thing once you touch them, correct? As long as they're... You don't even have to touch 30 feet. Okay. And as long as uh, she's willing. Okay. All right, so you cast uh, haste upon yourself and upon Buttercup. And those of you that are watching behind, watch as both of them are, like, moving faster than you've ever seen them before in life, and they quickly catch up with the rest of you guys. And over the course of the next couple of minutes, they start basically out in front of you guys, waiting for Brevin to catch up. So you guys are able to make your way to the gate. You guys can see the uh, whatever this is creature coming up uh, behind you guys. Uh, do I have him here? Should I show you guys? Uh, nope, I'm not going to show you. So as it gets closer, everyone give me a perception check. I'll do it like that. See if you guys can make out possibly what it is. As Buttercup tries to pass by Twig, Twig tries to jump on her back and ride her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, damn, the bear did good this time. <laughs> okay, so i got to figure out how I'm going to interpret this, because uh, there's no telepathy between you guys, right? She can't, like, talk to you. Nope. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to whisper. She shit herself, uh, go wide-eyed, <laughs> just giving you suggestions. So here's what I want to do first, uh, Jason. I want to, um, because I'm not sure if Buttercup has ever seen this thing before, so... Have uh, have Buttercup roll me a, a straight up wisdom or intelligence. Okay. Um, well, she has seen a dragon before, because she was there yes. when you guys saw the last dragon. So I'm gonna whisper something to you, and okay. I'll let you d interpret how she can possibly communicate that with you. Okay. Okay. okay so. When the rangers boxes the whole plan by having his companion roll higher than him. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, not a whole I lot of information, can, but I tried to be yeah, somewhat, the, you know, cryptic with it. So. All right. So this monster or whatever this thing is is probably a good. 200 feet away from you guys at this point as uh, you guys reach the little floating little platform of where the uh, uh, the portal was before and Brevin starts to kind of frantically trace the runes up here. Uh, seconds pass and you see the, the creature coming closer and closer and then the the window starts to kind of come it's mil black milky murky kind of swirling like it was before and by that point you guys can see within 100 feet this thing is closer to you guys. And within 100 feet, there's no need for another perception check at this point. It's not a dragon, but it is something quite huge and very grotesque. It's almost like demon or devilish-like in nature. A winged creature coming right for you guys and starting to scream something uh, incoherent. I'm assuming none of you guys speak abyssal. Is that correct? Corn uh, mm -hmm. speaks elvish. Is that close? <laughs> well, that won't come in very handy. <laughs> alright so Brevin's finished kind of doing the thing he's like go 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 all of you I'll go last go go as soon as, as Buttercup with twig body mounted bolts through the, through the door okay all you know is if everybody's keeping that same mentality or someone want to stay in yes, <laughs> okay you know, I, don't, I don't see an order All right, all Just, I need to know uh, is if someone's not going through. It's all I need to know. I uh, know. We're going. <laughs> okay. All right, so one by one, you guys all pop through. And at the last second, you can hear the thing roaring it and closer as Brevin kind of pops through the, the portal and quickly swipes a hand across a couple of runes, and the, the portal goes, bl goes uh, blank again. And you, got, you guys see the, the stone before you as you guys are back in Mucklestones at that point. 
And uh, Brevin kind of turns <laughs> to all of you guys and said that was a uh, some kind of an abyssal demon. I'm not sure what kind, but uh, they're not that uncommon in that area. But I didn't want to take a chance to uh, really find out how powerful that thing was. So thank you for your haste. Um, Corin's gonna be like, uh, Corin's like, glad you made it here. We need to find uh, find Jodell and find out what happened to everybody. Right, and there'll be a couple of acolytes there that are on the other side of the uh, the portal once you guys come into the actual Mucklestones themselves, and they'll greet each one of you and ask the usual questions about you know what happened to the others. They can't. They went in after you. Did they not find you? Uh, we're all scared. They're there. Yeah, they're there, friend. They're there. They came through here, you know, last night. It's it's been what. Four or five hours now, I guess. But uh, they came through then said they left you behind and were concerned about you. They went in looking for you. Oh, we must have been fools. And Brevin's sitting there kind of shaking his head, puts one hand on his forehead. It's like, how are they going to find their way back? How are they going to find their way there? How are they going to find us? Corin's going to say, should we go back in? Maybe we should wait for that uh, demon he looks at Corn like, and this is okay. I know your ears are pointed, but the air is not that thin up there. <laughs> Did you see that thing on the other side? Corn is going to argue with like, well, Brevin said the gate moves. Maybe it'll move us further. It moves like, occasionally. Maybe we just get Professor P another tracking potion, and then he can go pick that up, and then we can I, come back. I, I like that idea. Thank you, Dynamite. <laughs> And then there we go back. It should be gone by then. <laughs> and then we might all meet up at the, uh, the portal again. If you're sending that coot, I'm going to. <laughs> What'd you call him? Coot. Oh, coot. I, I was like, <laughs> I couldn't figure what the <laughs> word was. I was like, I, I, what's a coot? <laughs> Corin's going to be like, well, we, we got to go get them, especially if they're just going to get lost in there. He's going to ask Brevin how we go about finding them. He's like, I, I, I honestly, I, I don't know. It's kind of difficult to track something within the astral plane because you're not really leaving tracks, per se. You know what I mean? All I can, all I can do is hope they paid attention the first time we went through and they followed the same path. But like Corey. I said, this, this Mucklestone gate moved, and I'm not sure... If they'll even find their way back. Corrin's going to ask the Acolytes how they got back in the first place. How they got back? Yeah. Because you're asking Brevin how he was able to, to figure out where the game no, was? No, ask, no, no, asking the Acolytes how Silith and the Red, uh, Osul and Toman got back. I, they, they didn't come through the gate, I tell you. They, said they, they showed up, you know, from... From the town. They came up here and we opened the gates up, or Kudwar opened the gates up for them last night so they could go back through and find you guys. We never saw them come so, through. The first thing we need to do is find Kudwar. Okay, very well. We can we can lead you back. Everyone else in agreement? Well, do we have... Um, do you guys have one of those tracking potions? <laughs> I'll ask the acolytes. And they'll, they'll look at each other and say... No, we have no use for those. But as I understand, Jimba is the one that makes those, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just need one more of those. All right, well, why don't we go back and then it seems like Silver has a way of transferring himself between the plane. Um, and, oh, well, if he didn't come through the gate, that seems like to be the case. <laughs> we don't know that it was Silver that did it. Ah, that's true. Um, we, but saw, I'm, we saw Silla literally say, y'all come with me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, did I do that? It's been a few yeah. seconds. Yeah, you did. Okay, never mind. Yeah, okay, so Silla did, did something. Yeah, so that's good. Good to know. Corn and Silla. Silla will find a way to get them back. <laughs> uh, you guys say that, but does oh. the group really know that? Well, let's go get. No, Twig doesn't believe in Silith. Twig has watched Silith pay the, um, the, the gnomish. 
So we can still pay the gnomish what? Do you remember the little gnomish servants with the carrying the luggage and all that, and uh, sort of like gave them a hand cake, uh, handshakes and gave them his laundry? I vaguely remember that, I think. <laughs> Back in Mucklestone, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Twig doesn't feel confident with Phil- Silent. <laughs> I can imagine. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're still going to go find... Uh, did they tell us? Did the acolytes tell us that Joe Dell was gone, or they only just told us that C- uh, Cudwire was the one that brought them back to the portal? Yeah, they don't know about Joe Dell. They would have just told you that Cudwire is the one that led the, the Silith and Toman and Usul uh, through the gate uh, to go try to find you guys. And it had been by about five or six hours ago, they're guessing. So Korn's under the... Yeah, so Korn's like, we need to go find... Jodel and Kudwar and tell them we have succeeded. We've got at least some of the potions set and if we can find our friends, maybe we can go back and, you know, actually venture into limbo. Mm-hmm. And get some more of those potions. Why don't we um, stay here for the long rest or short rest and allow one of the good acolytes here to go and get the guy who makes the potions, ask him to bring some and bring them back here while we rest. And that way Professor... P can get his potion planted. We can rest because we all got, well, a few of us got hurt, and they can go and get somebody and we don't need to travel back to town again and look like we don't know what we're doing. And be blindfolded again. and Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we don't know what will come through the gates. And also, if our friends do come through the gate, we'll be here waiting for them. I mean, the acolytes will, you know, they'll be okay with that if you want to send one of them off to into town. It saves them yeah. the hassle of trying to blindfold you guys and lead you back through. Yeah. So, <laughs> see, boys, off you go. <laughs> I'm assuming they'd leave some as guards because that's what they're there for, right? They like, guard the get the muckle stones there. Yeah, they're only going to send one acolyte. Yeah, there's only like three or four there, but as you guys saw last time, that the giant treant was still there. Although you can't really quite make out where he is, but the whole grove is surrounded by uh, trees. So one acolyte will leave. Right now, it's about dawn for you guys. So they tell you that uh, it'll probably take him I don't know, maybe half an hour to get there, half an hour to get back, assuming mm-hmm. that he can find Kudwar and everything on time. But you said you also want to bring Jimba back, or you just want the acolyte to the get one of the potions from Jimba and bring that back? Just uh, get a potion. Yeah, can we get, like, two, just in case? <laughs> Somebody, we find someone else who needs to track one, but, yeah, that would be good, just the potion. Yeah, and the acolyte says you'll all... I'll get as many potions as you know Jimba has, just just in case. But yeah, I'll I'll go do that, and I'll inform Cudwar, and I'm sure he'll come back. Anything else? Nope. I think that, uh, I think that covers it. We're gonna we're gonna rest. Okay. So you guys taking a short rest or a long rest? Well, how long was it for a, a there and back trip for the acolyte? Just an hour. For I thought it was longer than that. So, no, nah, half an hour there and back. You said. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I guess it's short rest then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's spend some hit dice. Yay! Okay, so go ahead and roll your uh, your hit dice if you want to during this uh, short rest. Buttercup settles down in one corner and Twig leans up against her. that all it's going to do hit dice? No, oh, there's those. Well, Fresh P and I both the same. Jeez. Uh, Sylvia's out at the moment. Okay. So that's everyone's going to do hit dice. I'll wait for Sylvia to get back. She can do the same thing. But since it's now been close to 24 hours since you guys had a long rest, I need each of you guys give me a con, a con save with advantage. With advantage? She took a short rest. Oh, and it's plus four from being next to Diddy. <laughs> Someone will need it. Oh, God. Four is asleep. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing to this poor guy? <laughs> oh, I can get one of them. Uh, Sylvia. Okay. Apparently, I rolled three times for the bear. Oh, how about that? All right, so as of right now, everybody's okay except for corn. Corn is going to be suffering from one level of exhaustion. Less sleep. He doesn't. He doesn't sleep. He just meditates. 
Then it's been more than 24 hours since you guys have taken a long rest. That's why we're doing it. Dang it. <laughs> so just a and also, he reminder. still needs eight hours. He just has four hours, and then he has to have four hours. Of... Mm. So just a reminder, Seleth, uh, level one exhaustion is just advantage on all ability checks, so it's not that bad yet. But... Yeah. Can still attack and everything. Just... Yeah. <laughs> yep, just as ability checks. So saves is all fine, just ability checks. I'm just saying, his perception wasn't so good before he was tired. Okay. Oh, so oh, you're back. Oh, yeah. Were you going to uh, yeah, roll yeah. any hit dice? Yeah, I was. Okay, go ahead and roll that. Okay. 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 Just remember, when you guys do a long rest, you only get half your hit dice back. Make sure you guys are aware they don't get all of them back. You only get half of them back when you do a long rest. So make sure you're marking this on your sheet. I think it might automatically do that when you roll them, but make sure you keep track of that. No, nah, it doesn't. You have to update it. Okay. I just updated mine. So I've got eight hit dice left, and I've got 11 normal. Wait, a long rest. Uh, and, oh, and we also get uh, eighth of our spell power back, don't we? Correct, for one hour. Yep, one eighth of your mana back. I can't access it because I can't see Mike. So I'm going to take a second and uh, add your mana back if you want to as well. The one eighth of whatever your max is. Uh, uh, let's see. So I'm down to 13. What's the wholeness of body? I got something he can use to heal himself. So I don't see. I'm looking to try to see it here. I don't see it in all this. Nice tradition. Just like myself. He's got a lot of stuff in here, jeez. Yes, he does. Oh, there you go. At 6th level, you can ability to heal yourself. Actually, you gain hit points equal to three times your monk level. You must finish a long rest before you can use this feature again. Mm. Does, that, does anyone else need any more healing? No, um, Silas is... Or not Silas, um, Corrin's still pretty... A little battered. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, does the... I've only got five lay on hands left because I had to heal them. <laughs> uh, uh, I can give him a cure. He's, he's got he's got gashes in his arms from the knee, the spine that were like pulled out. All right. Well, remember we found those greater healing potions as well. I bought some. So, um, uh, what well, those? Well, he yeah. he has a couple here. Uh, they they don't have any stats on them though. Mm. Greater uh, healing is forty four uh, plus four. Yeah, forty four plus. Uh, oh, he used one of those right at the end of the last. Yes. Two, 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 where are they? Greater healing push. There you go. He's got two greater healing. So two to one, twenty-one. Uh. Uh. What the? Okay, give me a second. Just reset my roll twenty. You said he's got to reset his roll 20? No, my roll 20 just reset, and now it's having a stroke. There we go. Okay, I was like, uh, 44 plus 4. There we go. It is lagging out a bunch, so. Okay, everybody all done with their hit points and their mana back? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the hour passes. You guys watch as the Acolyte, the trees kind of part during the, where the path was, and you see the Acolyte and Kudwar both walking up uh, to you guys. And Kudwar looks somewhat surprised at you guys. And so I guess the others didn't... You didn't find... The, you didn't see the others. <laughs> No, we did not see the others. Kind of sighs a little bit. I was afraid of that, but Tolman seemed quite, uh, quite confident in himself to be able to retrace Brevin's path to find you guys. But what? So tell me, what 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 news do you have? Looks like he looks you guys over. Some of you still kind of somewhat bruised. I'm some all of you guys aren't healed back completely. So so were you successful? 
quarantine and say, uh, we managed to get everyone here except Pro Professor P's potions planted, but um, the Silith and Usul and Toman disappeared before we managed to get into the Yes, yes, they, they they told me about that, and they said that there was a there was a dragon, and they they feared that you guys might have been all dead, and that was part of the reason for such haste to go back into the astral plane to try to find you guys. What so? Uh, let Brevin explain what the dragon was. So he knows it. Yeah, and Brevin will obviously share with with Kudwar of Xerxes, which Kudwar has heard the name before, never seen him or met him before, but he's heard the stories from Brevin, and Brevin will share the fact that you know. How you guys were able to uh, somewhat talk your way out from being, I guess, brutally murdered uh, by the um, by the dragon. We actually had more of a, a tussle with the the zombies and the beast within that, that small island. But he shares all the details of that, unless you guys want to add anything to it. To which Cudwar just kind of looks somewhat surprised as well. What's... I understand Acolyte tells me you guys want to head back to try to find them. Is that correct? Uh, Diddy was looking for potion. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We, yeah, we need the replacement potion. And that, he kind of reaches into his roll, but he pulls out four of them. says, uh, Acolyte just told me to get as many as I could. This is all that Jimba had. So, do you need all these? How many do you need? Should be just the one for uh, Professor P. Yes, just the one. Not that uh, Cudwaro asked. So extra one or two. <laughs> and Cudwaro hand him over, and he looks at you, Doc. Says, "What happened to yours?" A dragon took it. The dragon took it, and at that, Brevin kind of elaborates a little bit more as well. Yes, the dragon took it. Doctor P offered it up as a as a gift, so to speak. And Cudwar kind of looks over at you, Dr. P. Levitt says, so, you gave Xerxes a, a return potion that will bring him back to Mucklestones? Uh, I, I thought so, but apparently it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> I can't say I've ever seen it used on a dragon before, but I wouldn't want to test that theory. I so. thought it'd be funny to send him after Silith, but I was wrong. Uh, yes, I I agree. I think you were wrong on that one, Doctor P. So I I I don't know what to think of this now, Doctor P. You may uh, uh oh my God, he just kind of puts his head down and kind of puts his palm on his forehead, rubbing it. So says Doctor P, Doctor P, I, uh, can I trust you with these other potions to not give them away? was a friendly dragon, I tell you, but I will make sure no more evil dragons get them. Okay. Okay. And just out of character, just so you guys are aware, that potion that you gave to uh, the dragon was not activated. Correct. Okay. Right. So Dr. P just yeah, thinks so it's it, going to send it, it back it, to Mucklestone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's no way for him to go back to Mucklestone. He has to put the return potion somewhere and then stay there. But but the way you were playing with Doctor P, I'm almost like he's like he knew he thought it was going to send him back to uh, Mucklestones, right? Or so who brought that, that up? That's what everyone thought. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> everyone else was like, "This is a really bad idea," and Press P's like, "Take it, it's yours." <laughs> yeah, but but no real danger to Mucklestone. Well, as long as you know it doesn't return you to the plane it was created, because it's supposed to be what you drop a drop of it and it takes you to where that's related to or whatever. No, you drop it and then it takes you back to the droplet. Right. So, like, what if there's just a big pop, like Nimba's ship, and it takes you back to the giant cauldron of it because that's where the rest of it is that's on attuned to elsewhere. Finish Nimba's problem. <laughs> 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 yeah, unfortunately, the only person here that would would ever know that is, is already deceased. Twig, not Twig, uh, Tigid. Uh, Twig's <laughs> former character is the only one that would even know what happens if you drink a potion that uh, hasn't been marked anywhere. So, and I won't share that, but hopefully you guys will get to experience that sometime. 
know, it no, takes you to a magical room filled with treasure, you know, and you, you gain three levels and, you know, there's a harem full of women or men for Sylvia, you know, whatever. <laughs> Woo! All right. All right, so Kodor hands over the potions, kind of somewhat begrudgingly. As a matter of fact, he'll hand, he'll hand Dr. P1, he'll hand two, uh, two others to either Quarren or, or, or Diddy. So I trust you two to kind of make sure we don't lose all these. Quarren will take one. Sure. <laughs> all right, so he kind of claps his hand together. So you guys want to head back? From what Brevin tells me, there was some kind of a demon hot on your tail. Are you sure you want to do this? And Brevin looks somewhat, you know, not so enthused about doing this, but he looks at the rest of you guys to answer. Brian, how long has it been since the demon was at the gate? Well, you guys came through, and it took the Acolyte like an hour to go there and back, so not very long. It's been like maybe an hour and a half. Uh, how long was the trip back um, from the mountain? All the way from the gate from Limbo, all the way back to Mucklestones? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, so, f from the gate to the mountain that we went under, mm -hmm. the, the gate to Limbo to that, how far was that? Your total trip from where the dragon was to where the, uh, mm -hmm. the Mucklestone gate is, where you guys are now, basically, mm -hmm. within the astral plane. Uh, well, actually... Mm -hmm. Did I ever tell you guys how long it was? I think you said like six hours. No, I just told you what time it was in the morning. It was about dawn right now. No, no, I think when we when Brevin took us through it that we traveled for six to eight hours, I think. Oh, did he tell you that? I feel like that's what it was. It was that was like four sessions ago, no? Five sessions ago. But Okay, so here's what I want. Silith, roll me a D one hundred. It's not it's not Silith, it's corn. <laughs> okay. Corn, roll me a D one hundred. Uh, somewhere between six and ten hours. Okay. Uh, my oh, my only curious question that is uh, this is this will be out of character. Uh, depending on how far the other party was to getting back to the gate, they now let's say we've waited here two hours. Now potentially they would be at the gate when we try to go back in. Potentially. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out the math here. And Brevin will share with you guys that sometimes time doesn't pass quite the same pace within the astral plane as it does on the material plane. So passage of time there versus here is not always exact. Sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter. So do with that info what you like. I uh, I look at them and say, well, what if there's something that's stopping them from getting through the other portal that we went through? So, Corn's going to point out that we needed Brevin to activate the other portal to begin with. So, maybe they haven't gone very far. It's just a question of whether everyone's ready to go back in or not. Well... Like, I guess, I assume we're taking a long rest. What else do we need? We have potions. You know, we got a short rest in any days we need the answer for the devil on the other side not to be there. Who wants to check? <laughs> Why did I know it'd be you? <laughs> And Brevin will chime in and says, with all due respect, guys, we don't even know if, if your friends are still alive. Well, can't we just teleport back to that original portal we went through? And Cudwire said, well, yeah, but then you you have to do it all over again, and I only brought four potions. And there's six of us here. <laughs> Well, we can just split up the party again. Nothing bad happens when that happens. Right? <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta rewind because Cudwell will remind you guys can again. We... I forgot as a DM, you can don't that return potion only works within the same plane. So you guys on the material plane, those drops are on the on the plane of limbo. The potions don't work across planes. 
You have to be on the that's same plane of existence. That's why we had to go into the plane of limbo to make the drop instead of putting it out the gate to the actual plane. Correct. Right. Mm-hmm. And Cudwire just kind of shrugs a little bit. So, guys, it, it's, it's your call. I'm not going to tell you to, to leave your friends there, but Jodell gave us instructions to wait for him in Yeshelmar. Uh, depends. On, you know your friends better than I. Can they take care of themselves, or do you need to go in after them? They'll figure it out. Let's go to the other tomorrow. <laughs> Twig's like, still doesn't need to live. I feel like there's a ghost of Tegan feeling some bitterness. <laughs> um, what, wait, where is Yeshimar? Is that the, what was the one that's in the astral plane, I thought? One of the towns. I don't think anyone ever told you the name of the town, did they? But that's what Brevin, if you ask Brevin that, he'll tell you. That the the town they're traveling to is Shrock Kit Lore. Okay, no, we didn't know that. Okay, so I'll put it in in chat. That's the town that's in Limbo, or not in Limbo? Uh... That's the uh, Gizrai city within the uh, the plane of Limbo. Yeah, it was Limbo. Okay, yeah. That's, that's where... not where we're, that's, but that's not where we're going to meet. Um... No, to meet. no, Jodell said to meet him at Yeshamar, and Brevin will tell you that Yeshamar is the, to remind you guys again, that's the elven city within the city, within the, the forest of Leth. That's basically where the, the, the Circle of Leth, their headquarters is, where the Druid Council, and uh, nearby is the, the portal that leads them from there to the, the Gith city of Shrot Kitlor. Um, yeah, I guess so. Or porn's gonna agree with Twig that, like, at this point, the most important thing is we need to uh, get on with the mission. Our, our friends can take care of themselves. They obviously they can get out of there if they really need to. And uh, we need to get to Joe. De- we need to tell him that we were successful, and we need to start stopping this invasion because every minute counts. And Brevin will, will will chime in at that. Says if you guys want, you can travel on to Yashomar. I'll go into the plane by myself and, and see if I can track them down. I would, he kind of looks over at Diddy and Buttercup. says, I, uh, I would feel a little more confident um, going alone rather than in a group. So if you guys want, I can go search for them. Uh, is Professor P still volunteering to go with him? I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Seven kind of looks down at Doctor. He says, "Doctor, I appreciate your enthusiasm there, but I've uh, I, I work better alone rather than in a group. Mm-hmm. If there's, if, oh, but you, unless you need to go for the potion, man, I can take the potion, one of them, and if I make it that far, I'll I'll drop it and mark it for you and bring it back to you. But it's your call. I'm not going to tell you no, but I will tell you that I travel better alone. Uh, David Meyer, would you mind giving him?" One of the extra potions, please. I, I've learned my lesson and want to hold on to the one I... <laughs> the one that's I'll not pass activated him. and useful. I'll pass, him, I'll pass him the potion, as he's asked. There you go. <laughs> so, Brevin thanks you for that. And he says, okay, so my plan is I'm going to wait probably at least a couple more hours to make sure that gate is clear before I pop my head through. Uh, those of you that know demons, they, they have uh, quite a long patience. So... I'm going to pop in. I may pop back out, but as soon as the coast is clear, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can to try to find them. You know, we, we, we could put a rope around Professor P and throw him in and pull him back real quick. <laughs> and <laughs> He's I'm, missing his head. When we... <laughs> Diddy says, I'm pretty good against demons. Maybe um, we should all go in and clear the way because otherwise that thing might just stay there. We just... We also have a job to do, guys. So we need to get that done. Hmm. Let's go. If he's there, we'll deal with him. If he's not, we won't. I just need a decision from you guys. Did, did he want to stay and try and fight off the Drake? Uh, Corn and Twig want to proceed to um, to find Jadell and like get the plan rolling. So oh, no, I'm has... happy to go with the plan. I just uh, thought we had to go through the gate. No, 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 no we don't have to go through the gate. Okay, let's go. The, yeah, Yashimar is in this plane. Yeah. 
Correct. Yeah, Shamar is on the material plane, so in the forest of Leth. It's uh, probably, about, oh, that's right. probably about 400 miles to the east of where you guys are right now. <laughs> and Kudwar will share with you guys that he plans to transport you guys via tree to a closer location. Matter of fact, he can probably transport you right to Yeshamar. Uh, let's let's go. If everyone's going with the tree, that's where I'm going to go. Because obviously, I can't play with demons on my own. Yeah. The, yeah. Right. The only other thing we could maybe think about is we all go through now, defeat the demon, come back, let Jordell go and find out so he's safe, and then go and stick on court. Right. Well, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to leave anyone behind. So. Yeah, because I'm thinking our friends, if they come back through the gate and the demon's still there, it's. I don't know. <laughs> did you see? Did you see bouncing around going, I want to fight the demon? <laughs> <laughs> but there's only this one open. So if we all go in there and four of us die and then the other ones are stuck, then there's no one to complete the mission. Didn't the zombie beat the shit out of you? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, he's sort of kicking the dirt. He goes, yeah, he did. <laughs> but I was trying to make, say face. You know what I mean? I wasn't expecting a giant, like, star to be out. All right, so right now we got we Twig and Corn are both um, both saying we should go. And Diddy's like, I want to fight it, but we should. Professor Pease doesn't trust himself, which is probably the best thing ever. <laughs> and uh, Sylvia's still wants to save everyone. So I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll just sort of say I don't think there's too much harm stepping through the gate, defeating the demon, stepping back through, and then going on on path because. Save our friends the inconvenience of fighting that demon. We save Jordell, who might go through and it'll still be waiting there. And we know that it, the coast is clear. And if the demon's gone, we just suffer a little bit of dizziness. That's it. I'm not. Let's go character. kill the demon. Out yeah, of character, I'm totally leaning towards the throw ran through with a rope. <laughs> if you mention that again, the acolytes will go over to the where the gate is. It's all stone. He kind of just knocks on it with his knuckles. Says, "I don't think uh, a rope's going to help you when this uh, this portal doesn't stay open all the time. It's like <laughs> six, seven seconds tops that it stays open." You assume we wanted to bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs to stick his head in and pull it back. If he doesn't pull it back fast enough, then we get half a professor. Or he gets a haircut. <laughs> that, that beard is pretty mangy. <laughs> All right, what's it gonna be, so guys? Corn's <laughs> Corn's looking to go find Jadel because he hates centaurs and uh, and gargoyles. But I didn't say that there, but um, yeah, no. They, no, Silas. Corn's uh, really gonna convince Diddy. Though. Diddy has the uh, the the necklace with the, the drill in it. Mm. So like, Silas, like you said, Silas, Corn uh, is gonna be like, Diddy. You need. We need the the necklace, and we need the stuff. We can't risk it being lost. We only have the one that you have. Yeah. Oh, well, if you say that, he sort of nods. It's okay. If you think it's too dangerous, we should just go then. Oh, couldn't you just give the necklace to someone else? Um, but then, but then we can't all go in to fight the demon. If some someone or some of us will be staying behind, there'll be even less chance. Yeah, my, my of course he's a paladin, so he's saying, "Look, my my thoughts are go in there, get rid of the demon, so it doesn't pose any further threat. Plus, it knows where the entrance is to our realm, so I don't want him to bring his friends along." And and then once that coast is clear, Jordel can go through, and our friends can come through, and it'll make it safe. It's it's basically just a little bit of our time on the astral. Plane. Um, but of course, there's this tiny risk that you know something will happen to us. But we're all healed up. We've had a short rest. We we're ready to go. Um, 
I, I can put some protection from evil, which may and I reckon if it's quite a significant demon, it, it's just going to hang around and bring it. If it's significant, then we definitely can't beat it, though. Well, how many of us are there? One, two, three, four. We're pretty impressive. We should be at least able to give it a nosebleed. Enough to run it off. The AK, but... And, of course, he says, there's a little bit of my ego on the line. <laughs> So it's gonna look, see, I can't read. <laughs> Corin's gonna look at Twig and just like shrug at him, like, "Can you convince him?" Show of hands, how many people have magical weapons that can harm a demon? <laughs> Put my hand up. Uh, I have magic. Hello. Corin's gonna raise his fist. My bow is somewhat magical. Can't you just dip it in holy water? I've got a spell that could make your anyone's weapon magical for an hour. But I have to concentrate on it. So I um, prefer to do the protection from evil. That makes it really hard for it to hit. So I was going to try and soak its attacks, and you guys can lay into it. Oh, uh, just... Uh, Corn's going to suggest... Um, why don't we just quickly contact Jodell? And he's going to pull out, he's got uh, sending pebbles. Mm -hmm. So you can send yeah. a, short, a short message to, uh, to Jodell and it can have a, a return message, yeah. That's your call. Is that what you want to so, do? It's 25 words or less. Uh, The other thing, too, is if we go in and fight the demon, when we come back out, somebody could prepare that transport spell that'll get us to um, Yishima. And Kudwa was showing that he, he can do that from pretty much anywhere. Yeah, perfect. All he needs is a tree big enough to do it. Yep. We've got plenty of those around. So what do you reckon, guys? Are we all in to fight this demon? Can I... <laughs> I mean, the part that he had two heads and like looked like a baboon, that was a little bit of a turn-off. But other than that, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> he was, was that, really was that, big, too. Is that from your awesome perception roll, I guess, where you got all the two baboon <laughs> heads? Probably, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, that's what Diddy dreams of. He goes, yeah, I reckon we should go because we don't also don't know how time acts there versus here. So uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, uh, eighteen, twenty. There. So Korn sends a message to uh, Jadel. Okay, I'm reading it. We have lost Seleth, Tolman, and Usul in Astral Plane. Should we rescue or come to you in Mucklestone now? Okay. Oh, that... uh, I'll say two two more words in that. <laughs> mission success. Mission success. There. Because <laughs> okay. they can do 25 words, right? And that's 20, so 22 words. Okay. All right. So let me think for a second. How he wants to respond to this. So you. You, you say this message into the pebble, and you watch after a few seconds, it just kind of crumbles to dust, kind of blows away in the, in the wind. And how do I want... Do you want me to send this just to you, or let me say it out loud uh, to everybody? Just to, just to corn. Okay, so let me think for a second how he wants to answer this. We've lost to the Tomonu Sul and Astro Plan. Should we rescue that, or come to you? I, I could have GM wished me that. I just, I just put that he was whispering, but... Uh, I kind of GM to you, I guess. Yeah, it's out there to everybody. That's why I'm reading it out loud. So. Yeah. In Mucklestone now, mission success. <laughs> okay. Uh... Okay, I'm whispering back to you. 25 okay. words or less. So am I whispering this to Sylph, not Corrin, I'm assuming? Yeah. Yeah, because... Uh... Yeah, for the login... Thank you. 
now I gotta count the words. One, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Hey, I can get some more words in there maybe. <laughs> He's got two now. I'm gonna amend his character sheet to two. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Crap! Too, 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 too many words. Twenty-seven. <laughs> you just gotta do it in like text speech, right? Leave yeah. out the ofs and ats. <laughs> All right, message is sent. So if you just want to share it with everybody or keep it to yourself, it's up to you. Oof. Rough. Uh, it, so, no, he's, he's totally going to share it. Um, so Korn's, Korn's going to say, guys, as much as it sucks, as terrible as it is, but we're going to have to leave them to take care of themselves. Uh, Jadel needs us to come meet him in Yeshelmar now. Time is, uh, time is of the essence. Okay. Let's go. So, does that convince Diddy? Does that convince Sylvia? Corn's <sighs> not gonna look happy about it though. Like he's saying, like it's a, it's our duty. We have to. He's not gonna be like, yeah, let's just leave those guys. All right. I can imagine that Corn would, especially with Usul and all the history he's got with him, he would feel really bad about leaving Usul. Well, Usul for that matter. <laughs> 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 so maybe not Stillith or Tome when he doesn't know though, but he'd be like, I trust us all, and uh, they they can t- take care of themselves, and they would understand that right. like it's for all of Theron. We need to we need to get a move on. Okay. All right. Diddy will put his hand on Sylvia's shoulder and say, "Well, oh, for the greater good, then." I guess. So. <laughs> and and Diddy will point to his eyes and point to the gate, like and to the demon from beyond, and go, "I'll catch you next time." <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you guys are all in all agreement. Now. Mm-hmm. Not going to fight the yes. demon. You're going to go head towards Yeshelmar, right? We're, we're we're still leaving Brevin though. He's going to try and right. Did yeah. he gave Brevin one of the return potions, right? Yeah. Yes, I give him a return potion, and I'll cast a protection from evil on him if he says he's going to go through now, unless he's got one himself. No, he I think he said he was waiting gonna, an hour or two. Yeah, he's gonna wait a couple hours to see if uh, the demon will, oh, went, will leave. Yeah, wait last second. Okay, <laughs> let's go through trees. Okay, so Codewire will kind of look at each one of you. So I know it was a tough decision, but uh, hopefully, Brevin will be able to find your friends and and bring them back. Uh, so I can send you the Yeshomar, but once you're there, um, you want to wait to hear word from me or Brevin if he finds your friends or are you going to continue on? Um, and Brevin Korn chimes in and says, well, you guys are going to have to wait for me because I have the contacts. And like, Cudwar has a way to contact Adele or? Well, he said he can you know, transport if he needs to. But Brevin is going to be going to Yashamar anyway. Brevin is the one that has the contact oh, within, okay, within okay. Limbo. He's the one has the contact to get to the portal that leads us to Limbo. So he's still got to catch up with you guys anyway. He said, if you guys want to go to Yashamar, meet with Jodell, prepare for your next step while he goes and looks for your friends, we can do that. Okay. So where's Wait, Brevin uh, now? He's sitting he's there in the grove. Yeah, mm. correct. All right. So let's go. Okay. So Kudwar will lead you over to one of the, the larger trees along the outside of the grove and start his uh, incantation, waving his hands in the air, uttering some stuff in uh, ancient Druidic. And you guys watch as one of the large trees almost like splits at the trunk, widens up to maybe about five feet wide, and starts to glow this soft white light you can't see inside of it. It's not like hurting your eyes, but it, it's glowing. And he kind of sits there holding his, waving his hand in the air and says, I can hold this for about 10 seconds, guys. This should lead you to a grove just, just right outside of Yeshamar. When you get there, ask for Arunu and tell her I sent you. Okay. Okay, okay everybody's Step passing through. through. Gordon, yep, just whoop, rolls to the tree. Okay, so let me switch the map for you guys. 
Where do we come out in the town? I'll share it in one second. First, I just want to share what you guys see. So, as you guys step through the tree, as soon as you guys walk out of this lar you're in a large grove, empty area, surrounded by trees, uh, you can't see any kind of a city. All you see is it's, it's, a, it's a very deep, dark, thick forest. And as you guys are walking out of this glowing portal, basically, it's, it's almost like a green hue to it. And you can't see the sun. You can see, like, very bits and pieces of maybe sunlight going through the very top of the canopy, but it's very dark, very damp. You can smell the the mold and the the, the earthen, all the earthen smells and everything within, within this area. Like but, rotted leaves? Yes. Yeah, like all kinds of these thick mold vines and stuff hanging from the trees. Uh, but as you guys come out of that, you the, the forest is completely quiet. You don't hear anything. Guys, we're too late. Well, it's else they probably know we're here. You think? Corn's <laughs> yeah. an elf. He's just going to, you know, pop out and... Is that it's? I've not seen his backstory where he's actually from. Is he from uh, here or? I asked I him a while back if he knew of Yashamar, and I can't remember. I think this is going to be me talking because I can't remember if you ever gave me an answer or not. Um, he's heard of Yashamar, as all elves have. He knows some of the history of it, but I don't think he's ever been there. I, so. I turn. I turn to Bear and I go, "Is there a secret password?" And everyone comes alive. No, they, they normally stay in the trees and watch you with bows. Um, I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll say out in, just out in this open area, I'll say, we're looking for a rune new. Is there anyone here that can help us? Just call out into the, into the open. Uh, what language are you saying this in? Uh, I'll say it in common. Okay. Corn that, can go ahead and, oh, no, go ahead. What's Corrin doing? Corrin can, can go ahead and speak out in, uh, in Elvis. And uh, how, how do elves talk to you? Are they, are they like friendly, like my brothers kind of deal? Or are they like just like fellow travelers? I don't know. How, how do elves talk in <laughs> D&D? <laughs> like they talk in Elvish. It talks however you want. I'm not going to tell you that they talk in a certain way because each elf uh, society probably has little... You know, draws and stuff, just like they do in any kind of society. All right, so I've decided Light that corn is a gangster. Speak. Keep it short and swift. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ooh, sure. I'm a my, fence world. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in Elvis, you'd be like, my fellows, we seek uh, Irinu. Irinu? Am I saying that right? Irinu. 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 Uh, and we need to make much haste. Can anyone assist us? Uh, everyone give me, I know need for perception. Uh, like slowly you guys start to see movement among the trees, up high, and behind the trees all around. You guys watch as uh, 20, maybe 30 different elven rangers kind of, almost like they were blending into the, the foliage behind them, kind of emerge out of nowhere. All of them holding bows. Not drawn, but at the ready. And they kind of step out and says, uh, one, one elven ranger kind of steps in front of everybody else. Says, uh, speak your name. Elvish or not? Yeah, he says it in Elvish. All right, so uh, so I'll introduce uh, myself. So it's uh, I I am Corin Winleaf, and we are uh, we are friends of Jodel. We were told to seek him here, and we were told that Irunu could uh, show us the way. You see, he kind of looks you up and looks at the rest of the the parties, kind of one by one, and turns around and and kind of whistles. And you guys watch as about 15 more elves come out from hiding behind the trees and everything. Says, yes, we've, uh, we've heard of your potential arrival, but we thought there'd be more. Uh, Corrin's like, we, we don't have time to explain now. Uh, perhaps on the way? He says, uh, go ahead. Yeah, there will be others coming. I'll sort of he, let them know he, when they he's look He's talking like. in Elvish. Yeah. Oh, they, um, <laughs> it's, yeah, sorry, he, won't, he won't know what you're saying. He'll just sort of say, oh, um, oh, if you're, not, if you're not telling him what you're saying, then he won't understand. He, he'll sort of say, well, thanks for seeing us. We're here. And he'll repeat the whole story. <laughs> We're here with Jodel and hope uh, you can help 
we've got friends that are going to be coming a little bit later. So possibly through the same means. <laughs> so Please before don't you, them before you finish talking, the, the elf in front kind of holds a hand up like he's telling you to shut up or stop talking. Yep. And, and he turns back to uh, <laughs> Corn again. It says, worth Brevin in Elvish. Corn uh, uh, is going to say, Brevin has uh, remained to try and assist our friends uh, lost in the astral plane. Mm. They, they, they should be coming behind us soon with any luck. Okay. Give me a persuasion, Gorn. Persuasion from poor uh, disadvantage? Because nope. he's exhausted? No. Oh, no, that's his ability check. Very good. I'm glad you remember that. I forgot about that. So, yes, disadvantage. So he's already minus one. <laughs> <laughs> As you tell him about, you know, Brevin, you know, not being there and he's got other things to do, he kind of whistles a, kind of a bird call. And then you watch as all the Elven Rangers kind of draw their bows back, pointing at you guys. And the, the, the main Elven guy you've been talking to steps forward his, his bow down. Says, drop your weapons. We'll take you into the city. And we'll wait for Brevin's arrival. If you say he's still alive, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> he was... <laughs> very <laughs> oh, damn it. I'm terrible. I'll, I'll sort of say... I'll look at you and I'll say, what, what are they saying? Uh, what did you say that upset him? So, Corrin's going to hold his hand up for a second and, and turn to uh, Didemeyer and the group and say, uh, they want um, they want Brevin. And yeah. then he's going to turn back to the leader and uh, switch back to Elvish and say, uh, Brevin is still back with Cudwire. He was intending to go rescue our friends from the... Um, he's basically going to insist again. Brevin is... Uh, about to make Did you put a hand on, on your shoulder and it's like, you're tired, my friend. Let, let, <laughs> let, let, this is me. <laughs> let me talk to them. <laughs> he's, he's, he's Quarren's still going to explain that like, uh, they I, want us to relinquish I, our weapon. Um, so I, I haven't said anything the entire time, but I do speak Elvish, so I've right. been kind of listening to, to everything. Thanks for helping. And it's... <laughs> You know, you're doing a fine job up until that. <laughs> and uh, and I sort of explained to them, I'm like, well, you know, he he sent, he's the one who helped us go through the astral plane. I mean, without him, integral to our operation. I hope he can save our friends, but, you know, when we left the town, he was going back into the portal, and that's it's a dangerous place. How can we be sure he'll make it out alive? I assume he will. Mm. You're saying all this in exactly. Elvish? Silvio? Um, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna say that. Okay. And he kind of looks over at you for a second. You're half-elf or you full elf? I forget. Half-elf. And they're racist. <laughs> and we did. So we kind of... <laughs> He looks, he looks over to Sylvia and just start talking a little bit. And you can see, like, uh, his nose kind of curl up a little bit as you're speaking. He says, uh, how do I know that you're not lying to me right now, half-breed? <laughs> racist. Sorry, I, you, you cut out a bit there before half-breed. I got that. He, he said, uh, how do I know you're not lying to me, half Well, how um, how would we even know who Brevin is? How and I, I describe what he looks like, and I go, he's a pretty stealthy guy. I don't I know think, if uh, I think they're assuming we've heard him. That's why we know what he looks like. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of look at the guys. I say, do you, do you? So before before you do that, Diddy, the guy is going to speak back to uh, Sylvia. Says, yes, you know what Brevin looks like. I also know what the elk look like. I know what the deer look like. I know what the fish look like. But I can kill each one of them. That doesn't make me mean I I'm friends with them. Are, are you are you saying all elves look alike? He kind of turns away from you back to Quarren. Says Quarren. Well, did you tell him his name or not? Yes, he okay. introduced himself. So he addresses you again, Quarren. Says, this is your last chance. Drop your weapons. Um, 
Yeah, Corn's gonna be like, okay, guys. Well, Corn's a monk, anyways. He doesn't have any weapons to drop. But um, Corn's gonna be like, okay, we'll come with you willingly, but you must contact your. And uh, I, uh, yeah, Jodel is in the city, right? That was what we did. Uh, did it was. Jodel said he's gonna meet you in the city. Yes. Yeah, and you must contact Iruna and Jodel. They can vouch for us. And uh, he's gonna give the motion to everyone else to like, you know. Surrender their weapons. No one else actually has the weapons out either. I don't like. We don't appear threatening. We just came through the portal without, like, we're not brandishing arms or anything. Yeah, I, I took it that way. But they still see that you guys all have weapons. I mean, Corn's got a bow. I mean, everyone else has got an Asilus is decked but, out. My Asilus not there, is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian, would, uh, would Baymax be around now that we came back to the material plan? I think you left him there at the grove, so it's your call if you wanted to bring him with you. Yeah, if we're sticking on the material plane. Okay, oh, I'll allow that. That's fine. The giant mechanical ball of metal spiky death. That, <laughs> the elves will love that. <laughs> so, like, Twig, you know, he drops a hand axe and another hand axe, and then his bow, oh, then his axe. quiver, and he stands there a second, and he stamps his fingers, reaches down, and pulls a big dagger out of his out of his boot, drops it in the ground, and goes, "Can't do anything about our claws." Mm-hmm. And thumbs thumbs toward the bear. Okay. So, how would you think Buttercup is going to react to the elven folk? Buttercup. Yep. She's probably just kind of standing beside Twig, like, "Okay, I'm here. Okay. Why am I here? Nice forest. Okay. Trees, love trees." Matt, so I guess at this point you didn't know if anybody is not dropping their weapons. Yeah, probably Diddy, because he's a bit worried about everything. He's um, been told to drop people. his weapon twice now. Uh, yeah, no, no, he's going to invoke this on them. Um, I've been waiting to use this like forever. So, <laughs> oh <laughs> God! Um, go. Just so we're clear, so there's about fifty this. of these guys with their bows all drawn on you guys. Oh yeah, this. Okay. <laughs> Let me read this. Noble. Okay. <laughs> uh, you got a problem there, Dick. Yeah, as I'm it's, reading through it's, that. It's racial. They're a different race. I don't know. It's still nobles and nobles, right? They deal with each other a fair bit, and we do have an alliance with the elves. <laughs> Twig looks at him and goes, I- I'm more noble than you are. Drop your damn weapons. <laughs> I'm just curious how you would you would communicate this. D, and then I'll oh, make a ruling on it. Yeah, so he says this in common. He says, look, there's, there's ways that you treat people. Um, we understand that you have your reservations and your concerns and a, a, a probably justified paranoia, but we're here to do a job. And by delaying us and taking weapons, if we were to be attacked um, by the forces that are out there, including and not only including uh, the slard, um, we would be defenceless. Uh, you would have our stuff, we w- and we don't know anything about this town. Um, by allowing ourselves to be defenceless, uh, to say it quite frankly, I'm a, I'm a noble. I would rather meet another noble and speak to them on terms that we would be able to parlay. We're here to do something. I'm sure we might be here here for a reason, but it's been attacked by people that look like us, or is why you think we would have killed. And if that's the case, um, I have a spell that can uh, that you would know that we would be telling you the truth when we said it. So, and I could include you in that, so you would know we didn't kill him. And he's a friend of. Him. I would much rather do that than you taking everything that we own off us, especially. And now I can return the paranoia the other way. We're here to help the world. If somehow your city was infiltrated, and there are elements of the slud here, we would be defenceless. That would not be. We're here to help the world. You're here to help your town. But there is a way we can do both of these things together. Okay. May I see? That was a long speech. <laughs> uh, <they>, uh, <laughs> Roll persuasion for me twice, did he? Okay. Wow, the plus eight, that's crap. (laughs) 
Right, he says, "Think. How we all be friends?" He sits there. His eyes are on you the whole time, Diddy, while you're talking. You see expressionless face. He sits there and crosses his arms, waits for you to finish uh, finish talking. He mm-hmm. makes another bird chirp sound, and <laughs> about thirty arrows just sink into the ground and form a perfect circle all around your body where you stand. It's mm. nothing, right? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you guys, all right, well, did he all start taking off his weapons? You guys ever see those uh, lips? It's like, uh, you know, the two hunters with the, like, the pole between them and the deer or whatever on it? That's Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so over the course of the next several minutes, I mean, no, everyone else is dropping the weapons. The rangers will come close. They'll kind of pat down each one of you to search for anything else that you may have not willingly given up. And they're thorough enough. They would find anything, so... Uh, unless you do, uh, there's nothing you can really do. They're gonna, there's so many of them. There's no way you're gonna be able to hide anything from them. So they'll pass do they you all pat down. down. Buttercup. Yeah, you, you see a couple of them kind of approach Buttercup um, with. They almost make like a guttural noise, like a bear. It's almost like they're speaking to Buttercup. Now, do you have like speak with animals? Like we can recognize if someone else does that. Is that just like a one-on-one thing? Uh, uh, no, I have the spell, but but he would recognize the bear sounds. I mean, right. he's been around Buttercup for years. Right. So you see like almost like they're having a conversation back. Buttercup kind of you know, grunts back a few times and looks at you and kind of whines a little bit. But they come up to the bear and kind of one of them starts scratching her behind the ears. And Buttercup seems to be at ease with it, so to speak. They're not like trying to take off Buttercup's armor or anything like that. But... A couple of them will kind of flank Buttercup. But the rest of you guys, they kind of collect all your weapons. They put them all in uh, these satchels that a few of them kind of throw across their back. And they'll kind of surround you guys and start marching you through this uh, deep, dark forest. I, I say I say to Diddy, that's, uh, you know, that was a great try, but, you know, there's a reason why my mom left uh, the elves. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Oh, I, uh, that was my mistake. I put racial there. It's actually a background feature. Okay. When I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, that's a, that's actually how it should be. It's a noble thing." Because I'm like, "You're a noble human. Elves don't care about noble humans, right?" Right. The thing that is, my thought when you put it- the thing that threw me off on that one just a little bit, did he was the fact says you're welcome in high society. I'm not so sure oh, Yoshimar no is a high society yeah. kind of place. <laughs> oh, they've got a tower. I was hoping that was enough. <laughs> I mean, there's the queen of the elves and all that junk. That's a, that's a, yeah. Yeah. Should be. Well, I'm hoping they've got nobles. I don't know. Did he, uh, this, he hasn't met too many elves, so this is actually pretty good. For- all right, so as you guys start walking down the path, is there any other conversation that you want to have amongst each other or with the elves before I kind of start explaining what you guys see? They only took weapons, right? They didn't take the amulet or anything like that. No. I mean, okay. as, as some of them were patting you down, them. they would have eyeballed some of your magic items, but if it wasn't a weapon, something they'd sensed yeah. was going to potentially do damage, then they wouldn't have taken it away. It's mainly just your weapons at this point. Okay. Um, I, uh, I, I say to him, I say to the one guy, the problem with half-elves. Or what's your problem with mixed race? Why can't we just all be friends? Are you saying this in common or elvish? Elvish. Elvish? You kind of, yeah. It looks like he's like trying to avoid eye contact with that as he's marching beside you a little bit. Uh, give me a, uh, a persuasion, Sylvia. I'm so persuasive. Uh, holy <laughs> fuck! See, I've been right all of those as well. So he's got human cootie. So, so as you tell him this, you know, ask him this question, again, he kind of side-eyes you a little bit, but he keeps you know, his face you know, uh, frontwards in the direction of you guys are marching. Looks like he, he almost gets ready to say something to you, but then he, he stops and doesn't say anything. <laughs> Did he all smile and say to uh, Sylvia, ah, uh, it looks like um, he's... Uh, Unable to answer. I, I I turn to Diddy and I say he's obviously just really attracted to me, but he doesn't want to admit it to his pool. 
Oh, yeah. And, uh, as he's trying to not make eye contact with me, I just give him a wink. <laughs> Get no That's reaction. Go, is Sylvia actually pretty or not? You're asking me? Yeah, I assume so. <laughs> no, I don't know. What charisma is she got? Oh, oh, well, she's a sorcerer, so her charisma's like... What's my charisma? 18. <laughs> probably pretty. So, he goes, he goes, oh, they just don't understand quite. Well, yeah. you see, she had a plus eight just like you, and she rolled even worse than you did. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, we, we, we just don't like the racist bits. <laughs> hey, at least the first thing they told us about Elsa is true, right? Let's keep going. All right. Any other conversations or anything you guys want to have before I tell you what you see? Um, I, I, uh, I asked them, so what's the deal with this place? <laughs> What? Okay. Give, give me another persuasion at disadvantage. Didn't you say first one? I don't need disadvantage, Brian. <laughs> you saying this to the same guy? I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna, let, I'm like, what's the deal with this place? What's going on here? Why is everyone, you know, why are you so on edge? What's What's around here? What's the history? Give me the four one one. Again, he kind of side eyes you a little bit there, a little bit. He says, "I shouldn't be talking to you, but this is this is our home, not yours. It has been for thousands of years, and we want to keep it that way." That's all the answer you get. Sorry. Sorry. So you you've only. You don't have any newcomers in here? I'll go and answer that. Are, are travelers uncommon here? Those who are invited. Yes. Did you whisper oh. to, to a... I bet you that, that Halls of Legend doesn't have any half-elves in it. <laughs> I, I, whisper, I whisper back to Diddy. I go, it's a shallow gene pool. I don't expect them to be understanding. <laughs> And Twig doesn't whisper like this. And you know their ears are better than yours, right? I know. I have one half. I have one elf ear. <laughs> oh, you look really deformed, don't you? They're not even. And I, I look at him and I go, "Is this how you would treat delegates in your in your uh, castle?" You say that to the same elf? Or, no, I'm saying that to uh, uh, to to Twig. Yeah, I'm like, how would you treat delegates if? You came to your fancy halfling manor. You're not whispering this anymore, I guess, right? Halfling? Uh, no. <laughs> you quickly <laughs> think is well, for starters, in the city I'm from, they would probably have thrown you in the in the ocean to begin with. And the reason I wouldn't treat you well is because, well, maybe that's why my brother's running the business and I'm not. And they just called you a halfling. Yeah, he's ignoring that. Okay, I, was like, <laughs> I thought he was a gnome. He, he is a gnome. <laughs> Sylvia, oh, okay. Sylvia, give me a perception yeah, check. Gonna... Or whoever's standing next to you can also do it. <laughs> I'm going to talk to Sylvia and say, fronts. you know, we're probably going to want these guys as allies, so we better play nice. <laughs> okay, Sylvia, <laughs> your your perception? <laughs> 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 we keep talking to each other too much, and I'm gonna help. So, so Sylvia, clubbed. Sylvia, and did you guys hear like a couple of the elves close to to uh, Sylvia, kind of talking back and forth in Elvish? So, did you don't even understand what they're saying? But then one <laughs> of them starts to laugh, but you guys can't make out what they said. Ah, uh, I can guess. <laughs> Actually, this sort of fun. Are you just, are you just, are you just <laughs> laughing with them. Yeah. yeah that's well, <laughs> Yeah, this, this is what happens when every every gathering you have is a family gathering, and you don't get out. People don't know how to talk. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other conversations? Anything? Uh, okay. Corn's gonna. Corn's actually gonna ask the lead off. That he's like walking up closer to the guy who was talking earlier. Um, like where they're actually being taken. Uh, give me persuasion with advantage, Corn. Advantage. Uh, so it's nulled then because I'm already at disadvantage. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Ah, very nice. Okay, he kind of turns and looks at you. And says, I'll answer this because you've been the only one that's civil here so far. Your half-breed back there needs to watch your tongue. We're leading to Yeshamar. I told you that already. Once there, we'll, we'll find you reasonable accommodations. Like he struggles to get that word out. Reasonable. So we'll find you reasonable accommodations until Brevin shows up. We'll send for Uenu, <laughs> and you can have your words with her. This is all in Elvish. Yeah, and uh, of course, like that says, as long as we can uh, Uenu or Jadel, that's fine for now. Very well. You'll you'll get your your counsel with the, the high priestess. Uh, oh, she, do we know she was a high priestess? Do you you now? said that now. Like, I, I yeah. think we didn't know that. I'm not sure so, if I don't think Kudwar or Jodel or Brevin anybody ever told you anything about who you're meeting in Yashamar because Brevin no, we was were just, going to travel with you guys. <laughs> yeah, we were just told now. We were just on the way to the tree. He was like, "Look for Irinu." We ask for your ear and now we know it's the high priestess. Okay, so we're just casually banding about saying we need to see the high priestess. Great, that sounds great. Oh, oh. did the oh. What? Uh, so did uh, which deity did they, they follow here? It was it was Elvis again. Oh yeah, but he's asking that anyway. He won't know what oh. you're saying, but he says that because he's a paladin. Who are you asking that of? God? Um, probably. Uh, Gorn doesn't know who they follow here. Uh, He's yeah, heard of the place, but like this place is pretty secular, from what I understand. So okay. you said, uh, yeah, he doesn't have anything written here, contacts here, or that he's ever been here. So, uh, so uh, Corn would have a Corn would have a general knowledge. The fact that you know this being Yeshamar and home to the druids, that uh, it's probably going to have the the standard elvish deities to the to nature to the forest to you know things like that maliki's going to be probably a, a, a given so it's going to be you know mostly the which the atypical type of elvish gods all deal with forest and nature and animals and stuff like that um corn would also know that this entire city is more than likely completely vegan since they are kind of animal friendly that uh some of the more secluded Elvish societies uh, will not eat meat. Uh, that's probably about the extent of uh, Corn's knowledge, other than the fact that this is where the Circle of Leth have their headquarters. Yeah, it's just the general knowledge. But, like, he wouldn't know, like, well, no one else but Corn, and if Sylvia heard it, Sylvia would know that uh, Irene was a high priestess, but he doesn't know what she's the high priestess of, so the those die. I mean, I mean, you can assume, but. High priestess could be any, any any number of things. Yeah. So, I, I pass that on, like, the general little, the general knowledge, as long as, like, I'll give the side eye to the uh, the, the escort elf to make sure he doesn't uh, be like, oh, like, you're talking, shut up, kind of. Mm -hmm. But I could just give, like, a general small rundown to the party of, like, this is what I know about Yeshelmer. Right. Oh, no, I forgot to mention the, the elvish term for, like, high priestess is actually something called Nintiarch. And I'll put it in the, in, the, in the chat there. That's what the high priestess, I guess, term is for in Yeshamar and elvish. So, if any of you guys do any kind of lore within Faerun, that may ring a bell with you, but she's known as the, the, the high Nintiarch. Okay. <laughs> Any other conversations happening before you guys come into the opening and I explain what you see? Uh, Didi will just try and fix the relationship up a bit by charming their socks off a bit, saying, you know, he understands why they're being over the top with the uh, with protection methods. Security. And the fact that there is all these problems around. He understands. Trying to make up for... <laughs> Your failure before, yeah, right? Gonna, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to get into the better books, but sort of explain why he. This is that like, feat you, know, you got, or if you talk to him for like uh, what ten minutes or a minute, whatever, then you get advantage no, or something. That's silly. <laughs> well, that's silly. Uh, okay. uh, you know that? you know yeah, that that's too? Just sort of trying. So you don't have that feat, correct? Uh, no, I've. 
I will wait. So I'm just brawny. I think Silith is the one who's got the, the, yeah. the charming, charming. Uh, uh, so I'll do my best. And who are you having this conversation with? Uh, just the elf. The one who, you know, the one with the faulty arms. The one who, you know, basically ordered them all to shoot us. Oh, the main guy? Can the one be helped by nodding yeah. along with Diddy? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, first, you're going to have to persuade your way to get up that far in front of the line. Well, because because you're kind of in the back. Up. That's where they, they positioned you in the back of the group. Mm-hmm. And the main guy's up front. And uh, Corn is still like, you know, five or six feet behind him. Except when he tried yeah. to approach him, he let him. Oh, look at you, oh, your well, persuasion. I'll oh. use that persuasion if I can to see if I can get further up the front. Yep, roll one more time. Uh... <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> you can probably guess why I had you roll that one more time. You, you start having your conversation with somebody next to you, and, he, and uh, you're making your way up a little bit. He holds out a hand and kind of pushes you back. Uh, says, yeah. says something to you in Elvish that you can't quite understand. I, I tell him it, I tell oh. Diddy we it's we don't take too kindly to your tap round here. <laughs> <laughs> so like, no, or Elvish? <laughs> no, I say that I say that I tell Diddy that that's what he said, but I'm telling Diddy that in common. Okay. <laughs> oh. Diddy looks really dejected. Going, uh, is oh. it like a banjo playing in the background? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll come back to that one then. Click puts the banjo away. <laughs> Ding ding ding! Back the way you came. So as you guys are doing this, I guess technically Diddy's not in the very back. Um, Rand, how far or how close are you trying to keep uh, Baymax to you at this point? Um, I mean, not within like getting pierced by spike range, but, but probably within about ten. Okay. So as you guys are making your way, I mean, all the uh, the elves are giving this thing a uh, pretty good breadth of, of, you know, not staying too close to it, but they're all keeping a very close eye to it. And a couple of the elven rangers have uh, uh, put away their bows and, and donned their, their scimitars, looking at it somewhat cautiously as the thing is kind of rumbling through the forest a little bit. And uh, actually, are you ever going to give it, like, commands or are you just going to let it keep following you? Um, at this point, just let it keep following me. So okay. can't you? Uh, no, not right now. All right, so I'm just making sure there's no, like, verbal commands or anything you're giving to it as you guys are walking along here. It's just doing its normal command of staying within 10 feet of you. Yeah, keep it. Okay. So as you guys are walking, each one of the elves, well, actually, they'll probably ask Quorn first. So Quorn. One of the, uh, not the main guy, but one of the elves up there near you will ask, you know, what that thing is and who's controlling it. Uh, Corrin's going to explain uh, about the his short friend at the back, an inventor of some renown, but, but uh, he's got a, a few a few small problems, maybe a few too many explosions in his lab, but it's his, uh, his mechanical companion. Because he needed a friend, and so he decided to build one. So he kind of chuckled at that a little bit. And he shouts back to one of his uh, guys behind him. Says, uh, talk, to the, talk to the gnome. Make sure he keeps oh, that oh, thing God. in check. <laughs> and that gets kind of repeated several times on the back line until it gets back to someone close to uh, Rand. Rand, you don't speak Elvish, do you? Uh, I... I... <laughs> So one of them will, will kind of lean it down to you, Doctor P, and say in somewhat broken common, it "says uh, we know that sh- we know we know this thing yours. Keep it in check, or you pay for it." I. Okay. <laughs> We're going to communicate via chat now. <laughs> Did you hear me? Here. I heard I. Yeah, that's all I heard was I. Yeah, like affirmative. I. Oh, okay. In that case, I go, the Alpha go, you what? 
keep robot in check. Which is good. He kind of leans back up and looks back at the uh, at Baymax as they're rumbling through the the forest a little bit. And he, he shouts something back in, in Elvish to the guys behind him. Um, Sylvia, go and give me a perception check since you speak Elvish. Okay. Okay. Boom. Yeah. You, hear, you hear the elves uh, shout back to the guys in back that once they get to the city gates to uh, to put the the what word would they use? They wouldn't use robot. They would use the big ball of spikes, basically in some kind of crude term. Yeah, maybe construct. Yeah. Golem. To uh, uh, put it up into a a net and elevate it off the ground, but it's not allowed into the city. But it's not allowed to be loose or free. Right. Are these the... Uh, just just out, of, out of context flavor here, just because it's amusing me, are these like the racist against dwarves? Up? Uh, you don't know that. I was like, are they racist dwarves? And then like, you know, no ones are that? almost just as bad? <laughs> yeah, how would you know that? Yeah, you I don't. Guess I gotta okay. That. I'm sorry, Rand, what? I apologize. I'll be right back. I just gotta put the kids to bed. The wife fell asleep and the kids are still awake. Okay, no worries. <laughs> All right, so while he's away, he'll get strung up on a crucifix and the construct will be taken apart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other conversations? I'm what? Like Did he? Charlie up. Yeah. <laughs> Did he? Why? <laughs> he gets a Dupier right under him, and exactly. he's just sitting up. He just uh, wants Dupier noble as he wanders into the town. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as, you summon, as soon as you summon Charlie, all the, yep. the elves around you all draw their bows, and hold up, they start shouting at you in Elvish. And so Corn and Sylvia all tell you, he says, down, down, now, get, up. get down, get now. Get <laughs> okay, all right, I'll hop off. I was like, it's it's tiring walking along. How how long was it to walk actually? Like we've been talking, but like how long is it? How long we've we been traveling? At this point, it's been maybe fifteen twenty minutes. Not very long. So like a, a kilometer. Yeah, yeah in split mail, I suppose I could see. I could see Diddy's complaint, but uh, still, come on. <laughs> he sort of says, what, "What? What? He looks at them and says, "What's the problem? Using my transport." I got a question for you, Diddy. So when you do when you do this summoning them, is this like a verbal thing? Is it a somatic? How do you how do you go about uh, summoning this thing? I think. Let me see. Uh, I used to be able to spell that for yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Is this one? Uh, abjuration, verbal so material. Okay. So basically, it's All three. just um, yeah, it's a spell. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of time there. So after you, I'm assuming you got to send your steed away. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. After they all draw their bows on you and tell you to get down? Uh, uh, oh, look, I'll get down. I'll, I'll say, can I hold on? It's just a horse. Who are you asking? Uh, uh, well, the rangers, are, uh, he's showing it because it's a white horse with, you can tell it's sort of celestial. So he's just doing this more of a, this is who I am type of thing to let them know that he's of a good variety rather than a bad variety. Of it. Okay. Give me uh, another persuasion, did he? Okay. <laughs> the way I'm rolling, this is pretty bad. Uh, persuasion, persuasion. Here we go. All right. Oh, yeah. And one more. He's, he's hoping that they get to see the nature of the horse because they're into <laughs> nature. Hey. Okay. So you see, a the, the, few of them are still holding their bows up, pointing at you, but the majority of them drop it. But one ranger does walk up behind you, says something in Elvish, and then pulls a, uh, a scarf off his neck, wraps it around your face, and kind of ties it into your mouth, and ties a knot <laughs> in the back of your head so you can't really speak anything else again. Oh. Yeah. And then the rest you're of the rangers will drop their bows down, but you, you continue to kind of walk next to your steed at this point. Mm-hmm. So you're effectively, like, silenced. <laughs> gotcha. Next thing is the arms and legs on the... <laughs> All right, anybody else? Any more conversations? All right, 
so as you guys are going down this path, another 15, 20 minutes goes by going through this deep, dark forest, and you start seeing more and more light uh, out in front of you, like you're coming to, finally coming to a clearing out of this forest. And as you guys open up into this clearing, if you look on the map where I'm going to ping here just one second, you guys are basically looking at the city from this vantage point. So the only real thing you see is this tower right here. You really can't see most of the towers behind you. I mean, up on the top of the cliff, you can probably see the parts of this tower here and probably this one as well. But that's the only real things you see other than this large tower up front. These are some very large, tall gates here. We're talking like 30 or 40 foot tall gates with a very large uh, uh, metal and wood combined uh, gate right here. Also got some stone uh, base portions of it, upper portions of it as well. You also see one large tower up here to the uh, left side as well. So basically, as you guys are approaching, you see these large buildings up the front. And you also can see off in the distance, uh, kind of over in this general area over here, you can see probably close to maybe a dozen giant eagles. They're just kind of circling in a counterclockwise uh, motion uh, over, the, over the top of the city. Um, everyone can give me a perception check to see if you see anything more detailed than that. Wow, guys. <laughs> I'm just so distracted by the backcountry racism here. <laughs> Nine. Nine. How about corn? Okay, who are we missing? Just a uh, twig? I'm here. I'm just distracted. Perception check, if you don't mind. All right, so there, one person sees it. All right, so you guys come into the open, those eagles that you see flying up there. Twig, you can barely make out there's a rider on top of these eagles you see over there. And you can also see and hear uh, the sounds of a waterfall over in this direction over here as well kind of cascading down uh, and we're, you can't see beyond into the city because there's big walls right here as well right okay uh, okay uh, let's see if there's anything else off in the distance you can see some of the buildings that are higher up looks like they're mostly made of stonework but you can also see there's like hundreds of trees that are kind of intertwined all around this the stone almost like either the the trees are growing through the stone or the stone has been somehow laid upon and around the trees as well almost like they're they're one. They're grown together almost. But you can see that on some of the higher uh, elevations up here above the wall. Okay. So you guys are approaching the, the, the walls up here. You can hear a few Elvis shouts from some uh, sentries atop the wall. A couple of horns are blasted. And you guys hear the sound of, of stone on stone as this large gate slowly starts to open up and allow entrance to you guys. As the gate kind of swings its way open... Uh, about 90 degrees, you guys can see another host of these Elven Rangers all standing there at guard uh, at the gate as you guys are kind of uh, led into the city proper itself. You guys aren't making, don't get too far. You'll basically make it this little building right here to where the uh, the main Elven Guard will kind of lead you guys in. To uh, it's, not, it's not necessarily a, like a jail cell, but it's almost like it's a, a waiting area. Interrogation room? No, it doesn't. I mean, it's it's very nicely furnished, and you got some 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 plush furniture in there, uh, but there's no other people in there other than just the the rangers in there. And they sit you down on on a large room, and uh, tell you kind of wait there. A couple of uh, actually about six rangers will stay stand guard uh, over you guys as you guys take your seat. I'm assuming you guys are going to take a seat or at least stand in that room where they're kind of directing you to. You're not locked in, but it's a uh, uh, probably about a 20 foot by 10 foot room uh, fairly nicely furnished with a couple of basins of water over on the table over there and they kind of gesture over to kind of help yourself with that there's a couple baskets of, uh, of fruit over on another table and uh, the elven I guess leader so to speak which I don't think he ever even gave you his name is that correct uh, yeah no yes, name he, okay all right so he'll just kind of approach you guys again and says just uh 
wait here. Make yourselves comfortable. We'll, we'll uh, we've got we've got your things. As soon as uh, Arunu agrees to meet with you, or Brevin shows up, and he kind of looks over at uh, uh, you guys again, somewhat doubtedly. He says, uh, "You'll be summoned." Any questions? Corn's just gonna nod and be like, "We'll wait here." What's for lunch? This fruit over here. Kind of stares down at the uh, little gnome. Says, "Help yourself. It's it's there for you. There should be plenty here. If you Thank guys, you. if you guys run out, just let one of the guards know. We'll we'll bring more. And with that, I'll bid you do." He kind of turns around and heads back out the door. Now we are in a waiting. This is this is the politest I've ever seen, Doctor P. He must be terrified. <laughs> all right, the guards are all standing there stoically, not really saying anything. They're not really—they don't have their, their weapons drawn on the guy. They're just kind of standing there at attention, uh, kind of keeping an eye on you guys. Any other conversations and things you guys having while you're in here? Or? Uh, Corn's going to go ahead and explain what talk to um, the leader there about how Aruna is actually the um, the the high priest. Which um, could wear fail and Brevin failed to mention. About Arunu? Yeah, Arunu. Okay. Is that a dig at the DM or is that a, who are you digging that to? <laughs> uh, no, 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 that's 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 digging at like we just kind of left and didn't know. It's not a dig at you, it's yeah. character digging. Right? <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> no. Nah. But um I'm just gonna explain that and then um and then suggest that we all uh we rest because we're pretty tired, a little beat up. This is, you know, some comfortable seats, and we don't have to worry about like defending ourselves right now or keeping a watch. That we should just all rest while we wait for uh, wait for. You're having that conversation with who? Everyone in the group. Oh, the group. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else they want to do? You just want to kind of wait out for someone else to come back. Either Brevin or. Or Joe I mean, do we have much of a choice? We're kind of in the cell. We're surrounded by a bunch of people who hate us. And so they did. They locked us in the cell, or no? No, no. We're in like a sitting room. Yeah, you're, not, you're not locked in. Uh, you, guys can, you guys can see the door. You guys can see the opening. Actually, there's not a door to this room. But you guys can see back out through the doorway, uh, back towards the gate. And that's where a couple of guards are standing there by the by the door as well. But no, you're not locked in. They just ask you to stay here until they uh, got the uh, council with Arunu. Or Brevin arrives. Right. Brevin arrives. Correct. Um. Yeah, I say, well, hey, guys, you know, we could use just a long rest. Just wait here. If it takes them a couple hours, it takes them a couple hours. Maybe the rest of our party will show up, too. Yeah, that was that was a core instruction that we just wait. We try to relax a little bit since we seem to be at least in a safe place, right? And then uh, wait, wait for news because there's nothing else we can do. Okay. So uh, uh, he's going to sit down and uh, try to that what he does. Don't sleep, you meditate. Yeah. Yes, more or less. You, yeah. you should you should ask them if we can have some food too. Uh, there there is food. There's plates of fruit and stuff. Right? Great. Yeah, all, all kinds I, uh, of I and feed some. Food. I see if Daisy will will eat it. <laughs> no. Oh, did they find Daisy? Oh, that's a good point. Lad, Sinus is good at bringing up stuff that I forget about. So, I got to retcon that a little bit. All right, so as they are patting you down, Sylvia, they would have uh, quickly kind of snatched up the uh, snatched up Daisy. As soon as they uh, found that in the little pouch or wherever you wherever you keep her at, I mean, they wouldn't have yeah. like killed her on sight, but they definitely would have grabbed it and kind of you know looked at it somewhat. Alarmingly, and then probably looked at you with the same weird look, like why are you carrying around a tiny Grimlock? And they would uh, they would confiscate that. So retconning wise, no, would you? Uh, have... would... <laughs> uh, what would, what would so, you have done? Uh, I, 
I would have literally just said, fine, I'll just wait here then. If you're not going to let me enter the village, I'll wait here for my friends to show up. Could be you're not taking my pet. <laughs> and I, I say, and uh, I don't know, I like say something to Daisy, hoping she'll do some sort of trick. Like, I don't <laughs> to show up. She's like, under my Play dead. And I'm like, look, I can put it on a leash. And I, I like put a, a rope on her that I was using before. No. <laughs> All right, so you're trying to persuade them into letting you keep her on a leash, is what I'm understanding, correct? Yeah, basically. Okay, give me a uh, persuasion check at disadvantage. Because <laughs> you have been a shithead to them. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, look at you! All right, I'm going to roll this out in the open then. Of what they're... Uh... This is going to be a straight... I don't think this. there's... The modifier bonus for racism in this, but uh, <laughs> I hope so. It's gonna be this roll plus four. You need. Uh, oh, oh look at that! So, okay, roll off one Wait. more time. Um, can I use my uh? Can I, can I use my bend luck feed on that and reduce their roll by? Does it allow you to do that after the roll? Uh, when, let me see, I think it, it's, uh, let me just look it up for sure. Uh, why isn't it popping up? It's there not, I don't see that compendium. Uh, at the sixth level, you learn another creature you see in making a pack roll, ability check, or saving throw. You can use your reaction to spend two sorcery points to roll 1d4 and apply the number as rolled as a bonus or penalty your choice to the creature's roll. You can do so after the creature rolls, but before any effects of the roll. There you yep. All right, I'll allow it. So, no need to roll it. You've got to roll at least a one, and, and you'll win that one. <laughs> okay. So they kind of begrudgingly kind of hand you hand you back the uh, the Grimlock and they watch you you know very closely as you put the the leash whatever around her neck and uh, they inform you to keep the Grimlock within your satchel or bag as well in addition to the leash and they tell you that if they see the Grimlock out of that pouch they will not think twice to strike it down. Okay. Okay, and I, like, say to Daisy, and I, like, pat her head and, like, make a big, uh, and then I, like, you know, just let her know that everything's fine. <laughs> wow. How long have you had that thing? It's been a while. <laughs> Ever since Gukumar, right? <laughs> like, do they, does that thing get bigger? Or... <laughs> well, it's, it's now, it must be tamed right now. We're getting yeah. pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, at this point yeah. it's tame. I think I think so. So basically, it's my pet so far. Okay. Hasn't betrayed me <laughs> until Daisy finds a boyfriend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the word! <laughs> All right, so that'll happen back in the forest. That happened before you guys even got into the city. So I, I even forgot to mention, as you guys walk through the gate, you would have seen the rest of the city. And there's a, a very large waterfall at the top of this uh, giant cliff. Water kind of running down, forming a little, somewhat of a river. Uh, you guys can probably see parts of it uh, just through this section where you guys first walk through here. And uh, you won't see how it goes down here to a large uh, lake here as well. But you'll see some of the towers, all the rest of these towers you see down at the bottom of the map down here. So you can see there's a, a series of tall towers across the city. Uh... Matter of fact, when you walk through here, you even see over here, there's like a, these giant steps. Um, from your, what you can tell, there's like maybe 100 steps that lead all the way up this cliff over here. And each row of steps is at least 100 feet wide. And Corrin, give me a history check to see if you heard anything about those. History check on... Uh, that's a disadvantage too, because I'm tired. <laughs> Nope. You see the steps, but he's like, ah, I seem to recall a story, but I don't remember what it is, so don't remember anything about it. Alright, so 
an hour passes. Nobody comes by. Are you guys using that opportunity to kind of take a, another short rest, or are you guys wanting to kind of see if they'll let you take a, a long rest? Yeah, we need a long rest. Well, the way I figure it is we'll ask for a long rest, because they're going to make us wait for Brevin to come back, or whoever, so, or at least Jodell. And who knows how long that's going to take them to get if the, yeah, could you could you do it? We'll we'll go for like a long rest, and you could roll it out like a regular encounter, whether they come back and get us early. Yeah, just so we're clear, I mean the the Elven guard told you he was going to try to call a a meeting with you guys and Arunu, since that's what you asked for, or if Brevin shows up before then. Yeah, but yeah, but we'll, uh, so the high just is a little. Bit. It would be kind of funny, like just. Pulling out our bed rolls and stuff. <laughs> Camping. Light a fire in the middle of the freaking... <laughs> bad, bad idea. So I'm just saying, the first hour goes by, whether you guys are resting or not, I guess technically you'd get, you could take a short rest if you wanted to, but an hour goes by and um, yeah, nobody take... shows up. Corn's been resting. Yeah, so if you want to burn hit dice, you can, but first hour goes by, nobody there. Second hour goes by. Nobody shows up. Third hour goes by. There's nobody there. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop my long rant. <laughs> and oh, on that I've one, been exhausted by now. I've been I've been wandering around with plate mail on, um, splint mail on, and it's, it's heavy. It's made out of a dynamite, so I'll uh, take, take it off and. So Viddy uh, finally gets all his armor off, and you see him kind of crawl into his bedroll. <laughs> the fourth hour comes comes along, and the elven guard comes walking into the door and says, "Ah, and uh, she has uh, so, agreed to meet you." <laughs> okay, uh, so that'd be the fourth hour. So that, that actually would finish Corn's trance because his spent four hours. So he he would his eyes would open just as the uh, the guard arrives. Okay, I'm okay with that. Does that fully heal him on a long rest? No. No, you don't get a long rest with four hours on an elf. It's only you you meditate for four hours, but you still need an extra four hours of. They still need that. Correct. It, it's no. Oh, okay, it says you gain the same benefit that a human does from eight hours sleep. Yeah, but then they they wrote up that you still need a four hour uh, like downtime. I think it's just so you like can help light more with activity like a, yeah. like watch keeping watch or something. Yeah, it allows you to take longer watches. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, those are that came out. That's probably like what at least six months ago, if not longer. That came out about that. Mm. And I sometimes I've never about played that. an elf actually, so that's uh, I always knew that they complete. <laughs> yep. All right, so the guard shows back up, kind of somewhat begrudgingly shouts as he sees uh, Diddy and Sylvia trying to sleep. <laughs> Says, uh, Aruna's agreed to meet with you. We'll, uh, we'll escort you to the uh, the meeting place, and you can uh, have your audience. We've still seen no signs of Brevin. So I'm not sure if that plays to your favor or not. And he kind of wait for right. a second. He, he smacks his mouth hand right over uh, Rand's mouth or uh, <laughs> first piece of mouth. Shut him up. Who does? Corn. Uh, as oh. a, as a reaction, <laughs> Professor P opens his mouth and Corn is like, "Stay the way you." Want. All right. So let's let's, let's have a more. let's have a dueling uh, dexterity mm -hmm. or acrobatics check on this one. Am I still at disadvantage after that four hours, too? Yep. De Dexterity or acrobatics? Uh, I think how does how does that roll when you click dexterity? Does it go by like the number at the bottom or the the mod Just click on the word uh, dexterity if you don't have acrobatics. I have acrobatics. Then click on the acrobatics word on your on your character sheet. Eat that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so whatever Ray was getting ready to say, Corn gets a gets a hand over his face before he can before he can get it out. <laughs> you combating that at all, Randy? Or are you just gonna live with it. 
Dr. P's used to it by now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we're gonna we're just gonna we're gonna follow the. Is it the same guard? Yeah, it's the same guy that was leading the uh, the I guess the convoy, whatever you want to call it, from the forest to this uh, this location. All right. So we're just gonna. He'll wait there with his arms crossed, tapping his foot as you guys all stand up and try to wipe the sleep out of your eyes or whatever you got to do. Put your armor back on if you want. Hey, but, he sort of slowly having his... He, he eats some food as well to make himself feel better, has a drink, and then steps up. <clears throat> slowly puts his armor back on and mm-hmm. then comes... And when you got led into the room, they would have taken that scarf off of your, your head, obviously. But uh, the Elven Guard will look at you specifically. Diddy says, okay, so we don't need to worry about you calling up any more spells. Is that correct? Oh, well, let's... He he just looks at this guy. So he speaks... Oh, you speak common now. (laughs) You say that to him? Yeah. Yeah, Okay, so the next reaction is... He's treated unnoble-like. And this guy is... (laughs) <laughs> has been a bastard team all the time. From Diddy's point of view, he just been nice and said everything. And these guys are treating him. And his friends like dirt. So he just says, oh, you speak common now. So, yeah, yeah. Corn's going to with one hand on Professor P's mouth and one hand on Diddy's mouth. Yeah, he just knocks it or something. Uh, he just looks at this guy and says, if you want to take it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's have a, a, a dueling dexterity acrobatics. <laughs> yep, go everybody. Oh, I knock his oh, hand over. Jesus! How? <laughs> <laughs> I grab it too, and pull him close. So I'm actually grappling him, and I'll I'll sort of pull him behind me, and I'll say to the, exactly what I just said. Oh my God! And he'll respond back saying, "Yes, I speak the uh, the lesser language." Oh. Yes. <laughs> you speak it with the disdain that it's supposed to have. So he'll just sort of throw him. <laughs> You can take us to your high priestess. Was she the? Yeah. Who is she, the high priestess of? You're asking him that. Yep. So I, I can show her the proper courtesy. He says. And he kind of looks at you and looks over at Corn again. As you, I'm assuming you're still holding his arm, right? Yep. He'll, he'll speak to Corn. Says Corn. Or, does he know your name? Did you share his name with him or not? I forget. Corn was introduced, but I don't know. We don't know. His. Now you don't know his name, but I didn't know. Did you share? You shared your name yes. with him, though, right? Okay. Yeah, so that's the first I did. I introduced myself. So he'll address to you in Elvish, Corin. Says you can tell your friend about uh, the Netanyark. Okay, so do I actually know that? Because like I said, I personally don't know the character. Uh, Corin like, would who, know who that is. The history of the Circle of Leth, and that the leader of the Circle is often referred to as a Netanyark. Which he's, he's asking which deity they follow. I'm sorry. He's asking. Yeah, he, which, he wants uh, to know what goddess or god if she's. I'm sorry, I still missed your question though, Sola. Or sorry, Quarren. Uh, which deity the Netiar follows? Um, I don't think Quarren would know exactly which god or deity she uh, worships, but he would know that uh, Yeshamar itself has numerous. Uh, elvish deities or gods that they they worship or, or uh, yeah, praise uh, to. Yeah, did he's asking specifically which god? He's, he's asking the guards specifically which god. Oh, you're asking the guards which deity she follows. Yeah, yeah. that's what Diddy was asking. Diddy. He said so he can pay her the at least the proper respect. <laughs> trying to figure out how I want to rule it. Give me a persuasion roll again with disadvantage because we're not having a very good conversation between you two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, he's upset with this guy, don't worry. Um, yeah, because he's feeling cranky. Uh, persuasion? Yep. <laughs> he, he, look, he turns to you, and he says in broken uh, common, the true gods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, well, they're all true. awesome. <laughs> This is not where I thought this was going to go with Diddy. He'll sit up with his teeth and he'll say, well, if you don't allow me to pay the um, respects to your high priestess, I'll let her know that that was your doing. And with that, he'll just smile and let go of Cora. <laughs> Walk with him. 
He just stands there with his arms crossed. It's all right. <laughs> you guys ready? <laughs> Diddy walks past you and says, what is it called? <laughs> Feel that chill as I walk by. <laughs> no response. All right. Any other conversations, questions, anything? Okay. Guess not. All right. So he leads you outside. And he starts uh, leading you further, deeper into the city, up a couple uh, staircases. Staircases. Up a st- staircase. <laughs> Um, you guys watch as a, you look out across the city, it kind of grows higher and up along the side of this cliff. Um, it's kind of difficult to pick out kind of the transition between some of the stone and the hillside. Um, those of you that are familiar with elves, elvish engineering will, will pick out some of the, uh, the traits of that. Uh, a bunch of slender walkways kind of thread between some of the, the spires and the towers. See a bunch of curling stairways. Uh, provide like external access to a lot of those those t- same towers and see some lower balconies. Uh, you can see the trees kind of root in the earth. It's almost like they're growing out of the stones themselves and almost every surface that you guys come across. Uh, every once in a while you see like a, a soothing break and kind of this, this otherwise, I don't know, stern stonework. And you see green ivy kind of grows all over the sides of almost every single wall. Okay. Leads you up a few stairs, around a few corridors. You see a bunch of elvish uh, folk kind of passing through the streets. Uh, give me a perception check. Anybody who wants to, if you're looking around. Everything's at a disadvantage, but sure. Okay. <laughs> Damn, guys. All right. Good thing for Twig. We got someone else that hasn't didn't roll for it. Uh, Ben, press B. There we go. All right, so Twig, you're the first one to notice it as you guys are making your way. Uh, I don't know if you expect it or not, but uh, this is obviously an Elvis city. But as you're making your way, you can see there are you see a a few handful of other races here. You saw, actually saw a couple gnomes. Uh, you saw a couple. <laughs> Yeah, you have seen him before. You saw one dragonborn. I was like, yes, you have. So this is a dragonborn. <laughs> right. So you see one dragonborn, a couple uh, gnomes. Uh, you saw a couple other either small humans, could have been halflings. Mm-hmm. Kind of hard to tell from this. Maybe have been kids. You're not quite sure. But uh, you Probably definitely notice that it's not, not, it's not all elves here. Okay, so if you want to share oh, that, that's like, call. Um, um, yeah, Twig doesn't. Sh- okay. Just like he didn't share about the eagles either. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so at this point, as you guys are making your way up, it's kind of hard not to see the eagles at this point because you guys are making your way further up the city. You guys are making yourself basically to this uh, building right here. You'll actually walk by a section of the city as you look down. You'll see it's almost like a sandy beach with a large building kind of in the center there. And you can kind of see a couple boats that are kind of berthed on the, the shore of the sandy beach here as well. But they lead you into a, a large building here. Lead you uh, down some stairs and into another room with a, one large table that almost runs the length of the, uh, the room there. And they'll kind of escort each one of you to one side of the table. And you'll see across from the table, up against the wall, probably about 10 feet away from the table, is a series of very plush chairs. Uh, uh, one big one in the middle and two uh, next to it, a little bit smaller on each side of it. And on your side of the table, the opposite side of the, that room, you can see there's a, a long bench that's uh, sitting on one edge of the table. And they instruct each one of you guys to t- kind of take a seat uh, right there at the table and then place your palms upon the table. Corn's going to... Uh, okay. Yeah, Corn will sit down. Twig climbs into a chair. Does his ask. Same for Doctor. Yeah, same for Diddy. Ah, Diddy complied. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for him to say, no, nah, hell no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh, no, it's just thank you. It's like, I'll try and remember the history of uh, Yeshulmar as well. Ah, shit, cap. <laughs> I think yeah. I haven't rolled anything other than a three today. Yeah, well, you haven't done a very good job, nope. 
All right, so let me go grab her token just so you can have a face. I think she may be over here on the right side somewhere. Did it? I didn't over? see her. No. Yeah, she's on the other layer. So one second. You guys watch as a host of robed elves come walking into the room. Um, three of them female, and two of them are are male. Matter of fact, I just need to unhide all these guys because they're all going to be here. So over on the right here, these individuals here, you see all walking in. Uh, this one here kind of takes the... Oh, I got help if I was on the right layer when I'm pinging on stuff. Uh, these elves over here in this little box all come walking in. And this one here takes a, a spot at the center chair. You guys recognize this one right off the bat. That's the main elven guard that was talking to you guys, led you guys from the forest over there. And the rest of them all come in and take uh, take seats. She has the, the one in the center. He has the one to the right of her. And she has the one to the left of her. And the other three kind of stand next to her. This individual here, you seen before, was the first one to speak. It says, uh, Netyark has agreed to meet with you. We have no sign of Brevin or Jodel as of yet. But uh, she has agreed by her grace to listen to what uh, you have to offer. And she kind of just bows and doesn't say anything. Go ahead. This is in Elvish? No, he would have said that in common because not all okay. of you guys are Elvish. So he says he's bowing? Yeah, Rune would have bowed as she came into the room and then taken taken a seat. Uh, Korn's gonna bow like from his seat, uh, bow forward <laughs> to Arunu, and then um, to immediately launch into the tale, the epic tale. The epic tale of uh, uh, how we got here and what was looking for Jodel and uh, how Brevin told us there. How do I told us to Okay. And she kind of... I was Brevin said he's going to... Go ahead. Yeah, I'll say um, it was Brevin to, was supposed to meet us here. He was the one who also told us. Yeah. Right. And she kind of sits there and nods as you're telling the story. Uh, and when you're finished talking, she, she looks uh, each one of you kind of individually for a second. She goes, uh, I know of your story. I've heard the tales, as, as most of this council has. She looks at the, the elves all next to her. And uh, you can hopefully understand our hesitation of uh, accepting strangers into our midst. We know Brevin well. We know Jodel well. They know us well. We do not know you well. So you must forgive these. Uh, and she looks over towards the, uh, the elf that's kind of led you guys in to our, you may consider, unhospitable ways of bringing you in here, but these are dire times. So you have my apologies if we've offended you in any way. And she again, she looks back over towards uh, the Elvish guard, and he just kind of bows at her, doesn't say anything, doesn't look like a pissed off look on his face, he just kind of bows somewhat respectfully. But uh, until we hear from Jodel or Brevin, uh, your accommodations will stay as they are. We, we mean you no know, ill will, uh, but you you must understand why we we are doing this. So I must tell you that uh, Brevin has shared a little bit of the story of where you are to go to next. I ask you not to share that with the common folk. We do not want to start a panic, although many here do know of your journey ahead. Just please be respectful of what that news may bring about the populace. Don't cause a riot. You say that out loud? No, that's sorry. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm, I'm fading a little bit here. Sorry. It's, a long no day. <laughs> it's okay. We're approaching the three-hour mark, so about 15 more minutes, I'm guessing. So she kind of looks at each one of you. So as my way of apologies or 
recompense for maybe the way you've been treated as you come in here. Is there anything that I can do or answer for you? Corn's, uh, Corn's going to ask when the last time they heard from Jodel was because they were under the impression that he was already on his way here or here. Yeah, and she, she nods. She says, uh, last we heard from Jodel, it was uh, two days ago. When he, he was here? And she kind of looks at you, was he here? No, he was not here, but we did hear from him two days ago. And uh, he had mentioned he was off to find another of the portals that the Slotty are using, and that there was a, a band of adventurers uh, that would be coming here soon, being escorted by Brevin Lyodon. And that Brevin would be leading you on your next step of this journey. And we have not heard from him since. Um, so why did we need to come to this town? Was it just because it's a stepping stone to the next place? That's out of character? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, out of character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mainly yeah, because I, I, I wrote a few notes down. That's mainly because that's what Joe Dell and Brevin told you. Okay, told so you there, there, there is no portal from here. Okay. You don't know that. Uh, you don't know where the portal is. But Brevin yeah. was going to lead you guys to that spot that would take you to the uh, the city within Limbo. When uh, when she mentions the the slotty that. Uh, uh, Joe Dell was looking for another portal for the slotty around here. I'm going to ask you if they were having uh, they were having difficulties um, incur suffering incursions from the the slotty or the, the center. You're asking if Yeshomar has been. Yeah. We can show answers. It's not as of yet. We are a very well defended citadel here, deep within the forest. Um. um go ahead. Let's say uh, he's uh, he's gonna say uh, as a gesture of goodwill we've de we've dealt with these these foul creatures uh, a number of times and our our friend here he's gonna point towards Didima uh, they devised a way to save some people from the terrible afflictions the slotty place upon you with their Paris and he's gonna open the floor to Diddy to explain the the what do you call it the Didisilamire. <laughs> Yeah, procedure. the Silmire method. Yeah. So Diddy stands up. He sort of bows and he says, um, whoa, 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 whoa. "I can see." You that. go to stand up. Yeah. Okay. As soon as you stand up, oh, feel the guards behind you will put their arms on your shoulders to kind of keep you from standing up. <laughs> and the other two <laughs> okay. next to him kind of grab their swords. I'll, I'll say, "Is that really necessary?" I'm not. And Arunu kind of nods. At the other two, and they kind of back off a little bit. She goes, "My apologies, <laughs> sir. You must understand they are very protective of of myself and this council here." I understand. Well, I'll I'll bow to her and I'll. Well, it would seem that you have uh, good graces. And uh, he then looks at Rodley and and said, "It is understandable that you're can, um, that you are as defensive as you are, uh, but I'm sure there would be spells that you as a Priestess may be able to cast that would quickly tell you what we are, who we say, because this continued behaviour is really, it's going to make it difficult. We don't have any of our staff, um, and I would be more than happy to tell you, remove any slardy that infects your, um, as a, as uh, Quran says, as a symbol of goodwill. But um, whether or not you take us under chain or whether or not you allow us to come in, peacefully um that, that that's a problem because you know i i myself am a noble we're allies of yours and i was gagged everything i tried to do to show them that we were peaceful and we even came in telling that we were who we are uh, the treatment that we have received not by you or any but this man over here um we can see the look on feel. Riley's face just starting to kind of cringe yeah, up as yeah, you're yeah. talking here a little bit, but he's he's yeah. biting his tongue. He's not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'll say, and he, he's the commander, and all of his men did exactly the same thing. They were terrible t to my friend here. I I understand that um, she is a half-elf, 
but I, I was always told that your people were aged and wise and would not do things that um, I'm, I'm sure Salani would not be happy with somebody saying and her birth is just a tragic mistake. She's done great things. And maybe if people were to get to know um, her a little e better, my my good friend Sylvia, then we wouldn't be having, you know, the, the, a, a lot of problems that happen. But once again, I can understand why you are being defensive. And with that, I'll then tell her how to cure the um, the problem. If 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 somebody gets it, how to do the polymorph and get rid of the creatures. So we offer you that because we are going to come here in peace and trust, not the other way around. Okay. But Arunu, if you do have a way of detecting lies, you could ask us quite quickly. I'm happy to submit to something like that to tell you that we... And after you finish your, your little speech there, she'll kind of stand up and she'll walk over mm -hmm. to... well. You see his name, but you don't know his name. She'll mm -hmm. walk over to him a little bit, and she'll hold out a hand, and he'll he'll put a hand on hers, and he'll kneel down, and he'll kiss her hand, and she goes, "Now, Rodley, I understand your loyalty. I understand your ferocity, and we we welcome that at times, but we've had these words before. You must be more welcoming to those who who come who come here with obviously no harm. Did they raise a weapon to you?" It says, no, my lady. It says, did they harm anything within the forest? No, my lady. Okay, then, arise. And he stands back up. She goes, you owe our friends here an apology. A sincere, sincere apology. And you can see kind of the, the look in his eyes. He was angered at first, but now he's kind of like softened. Contrite. Yes, contrite. It's a good word for that. It says, yes, my lady, I apologize to you, my grace. And they go to each one of you guys and kind of bow and place a hand out to each one of you guys as he bows. He says, please accept my, my apology. I, my, my ferocity for defending the city sometimes gets the best of me. And that is right, wrong, or indifferent. My men follow that by example. All I can offer you is my apologies and my promise that it won't happen again. So first to Professor P. Anything you want to say, or will you accept his handshake of apology? He'll accept. I accept. Okay. Next he steps over as a twig. Same gesture. Did we lose twig? Okay, we'll come back to him then. Same thing over to Diddy. <laughs> Yeah, do you all shake his hand and then pull him in if he can for a hug, and he'll say he'll say to him, and he means it in absolute um, humour. He said, "Well, you know, your example is good for us lessers to see." <laughs> Smiles, <laughs> and, and, and with that, he nods and he says, "It's all for." Okay, so he kind of half-heartedly kind of returns the hug, and just gives you one of those cheesy, "Yeah, I got a." Sleep in my own bed now, look, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then moves yeah, on. He's to... Just trying to, try to make it, sort of break the tension. So to... um. He bows as he steps back from you, and he walks over to Sylvia, does the same thing, holds out a hand, bows down. Yeah. Sylvia, you still there? Okay, maybe we lost Sylvia as well. And... I was going to think Sylvia was going to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> so if she comes back, we'll, we'll cover that. <laughs> so, last but not least, walks over to Corn. But it's the same thing. But he actually looks Corn in the eyes as he bows down to hold out a hand. Corn's going to uh, uh, yeah, Corn's going to accept with his own little bow and handshake. And he's going to say, I know, in Elvis, he's going to say, I know these are stressful and troubling times for all, but that's one reason we need to uh, um, bind, uh, not bind, the word I'm trying to use, uh, bind ourselves together? No. Um, jo join together, like join forces. Mm -hmm. There's a word for it. I, I can't think right now. So. I get what you're saying. And he kind, yeah. of, he kind of bows and shakes his head. 
say, yes, my brother, I understand. I just, sometimes my need for protection gets the best of me. I hope you understand. Of course, it's going to nod. Right, and that he kind of slowly bows back away from the group. Did uh, Twig or Sylvia come back? So it's not, not, yeah, I'm, oh. yeah, I'm back. Sorry, I had to go. There. Okay, so I don't know how much of that you missed. Where, where did you walk out at? It, just as you as, as she started talking. Oh, okay. So <laughs> let me kind of paraphrase this. So basically, she uh, she shared with you guys uh, that she apologizes for how uh, the guard. Uh, kind of treated you guys and she basically kind of scolded him in front of everybody else in a somewhat nice PC way uh, but then he proceeded to kind of apologize to her and then he went to each one of you guys individually kind of bowed and placed a hand out and and made it sound like a sincere apology and he basically saying that it's it's his within his blood to protect this city and sometimes that brings out the worst in him but he offered his apologies to each one of you guys individually so I went around to each one of the guys and kind of asked how your reaction was to him bowing before you and placing a hand out. So how would Twig have reacted to that? Twig would have reacted politely. Okay. All right. Sylvia? I was hoping Twig pulls him in and headbutts him in. <laughs> <laughs> Something for you, buddy. Sylvia, are you there yet? Okay. All right, so at that, he kind of returns back to his spot off to the uh, the right of the net and yark, and she stands uh, before all of you guys and kind of walks up to each one of you and shakes your hand uh, somewhat gently but firmly. Says, uh, your, our home is your home. Um, and she t- kind of turns over to uh, uh, Rodley now, and she already said his name, so you guys heard it now. Rodley's the, the main elven guy. She says, uh, Rodley, I have no qualms about these folks being returned with their weapons and he, he almost seems like he's getting ready to object for a second but then he stops says uh put them up in the ma and the uh, mers in on uh wait for jodel or brevin's arrival we'll uh, we'll send scouts out and uh, i believe we still have and she looks over to the the one older uh looking elf on her far left says, I believe we still have some of Jodell's Sending Stones, do we not? And the old elf says, yeah, yeah I got them back up in the tower. We can uh, we can get a hold of them if we need to. There's only a select few left, but uh, if you'll, if that's your word, well, my grace, well, we'll do that. So, uh, one of his Sending Stones, I say I too have... Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry? No, go ahead. I said, I don't, I don't know that. No, I, I thought you were going to ask if, if if he had sending stones, the, the guy that just said that. No, no, he just said that they have sending stones, right? Cause she... Yeah, I guess he did say that word, didn't he? Okay, never mind. <laughs> she, yeah, she just said, I believe we... And he said, or, so then Corin can fish out one of his and was like, well, I do have, uh, I do also have a means to met, uh, contact Jodel. He's the one that told us to uh, to come here and uh, returning to rescue our friend. I, because we already they're already filled in on the whole story. Yeah, and she'll walk over to you and kind of. I'm assuming you're showing the sin, the sitting stone on your hand or something like that. Yes, it's one okay. of them. And she'll take your fingers and kind of curl it up over the sitting stone. Says you saved that. Says for uh, our own peace of mind, we need to have one of ours uh, reach out to him. Because you, you understand. In case they don't believe it's. Yeah. No. No. It's fine. <laughs> she goes. Thank you. Thank you for that. But uh, we have our means. We'll we'll reach out to him and have him confirm and we'll put all this to rest but uh i have no no ill will i have no concerns over you as of yet so please our city is yours just be respectful of our ways respectful of uh the folks that are here we're a peaceful folk except when um, we are pushed to the brink and she kind of nods Cor- over towards rodley again mm-hmm. go ahead sorry go ahead nope you <laughs> So Diddy might share with Rod um, how the slide transfer the eggs. You know. Oh, you explain it's, about how they uh, how they can sometimes yeah, infect it, them. Okay. Yeah, he says it's the blue ones and the red ones. Um, 
I thought it was their bite, but it's not. It's actually only their claws. Um, and, and, yeah, they put a tiny little egg in you and it grows. So if you get anybody who gets scrapped um, by one of those, you have to isolate. Okay. And at that, I mean, Arunu will obviously thank you for the information and she'll nod over towards uh, Rodley again and says, Rodley will uh, will take down the details of what you have to share with us and we will share that amongst our amongst our folk. Uh, we're, we have not been subject to any of the uh, slotty attack here within, within Yeshomar, so we feel fairly safe, but we will take precautions. Mm. Rodley kind of nods as well and says, yes, no. my lady, I'll... I'll get the details and I'll share them appropriately. Yeah, I'll say, I, I, I don't know if it's only those two, um, but we, we don't think it's the greens. There's an even more powerful type that's a dark colour, like a black or a grey. They might be able to do it too. So just anyone who gets claw. She says, yes, to, to the death slot, I'm assuming you're referring to. Yes, I've never seen one. Yes, as have I. I've never seen one, but I've, I've heard the tales from those before me. And she, they're not a good thing to no they are not and it's been a long time since we've had to worry about them but we've been through this before I don't know if Joe Dell or Brevin have shared that detail with you but uh, I have faith that we'll come out in the end victorious mm. yep and your paranoia is not a bad when they're it's actually a good thing I'll sort of smile between him and Arunu, um, because they do change shape. They do change shape. And Rodley can kind of ask you that in common. What do you yes, mean they change shape? they do. Um, I believe that they can polymorph into uh, the look of a person. Like, you could have one. It might just be the more magic ones, but um, they can change into the likeness of somebody else. Perfectly. Do. Um, so... And, and I you, think have, you've witnessed this personally. Uh, we, I've seen them change, but I don't. Yeah, I've seen some change to them. Um, yes, I have. Okay, I've only heard stories of such tales. Wasn't sure too mm. if I should believe them or not. That's good to know. Yeah, and I, if they have killed the victim, they might have the knowledge of the person. So it's really hard to know that. But look, I think that would be later stage stuff. You you guys just worry about anyone who gets. Okay, very well, good sir. So, if uh, mm -hmm. you have any more questions for Unu or the council, just what gods you follow? <laughs> just what gods we follow? Oh no, I'll just say quietly to Arunu if she would wouldn't mind telling me her deity. And she kind of looks over at you a little bit and looks at the rest of the council. Says. Uh, it's we have many gods here, and we believe mm -hmm. in each one and their sanctity and their their play in this world. But uh, I wouldn't say I follow one god. I just say I follow the gods. And she'll rattle off that all the different temples they have within Yashomar, and all the different deities that uh, that they worship. Okay, so not the Father Karelin, it all the, the all the others. And I'm going off memory because I got each one of these towers here with the information. I think that one of the towers is dedicated to Corellian. I'll have to double check that and let you know. I think it may be the Tower of Ta. Let me look it up real quick. Here, I'll pull each one of them up and I'll tell you real quick what they are. Oh, yeah, here you go. The Tower of Ta. And she'll kind of lead you guys outside the room and kind of point to the different towers up here. Tower of Ta over here. Oop, I got to click on the right freaking layer, Brian. You can see on the map here. The Tower of Ta over there. Yeah. And she tells you that is yeah. the temple dedicated, uh, she said Tower of Ta, which in Druidic means moon. It's uh, uh, acts yeah. as a place of worship study for Saloon, the goddess of moon. Yeah. Uh, also houses the shrines to Corlan, uh, Larathion, I don't know if I say that name right or not, the elf deity of art and magic, and mm -hmm. Sehanain, Moonbow, elf goddess of the moon. Oh. Yeah. Uh, how was your fight with the Nars? I know you guys beat them a while back. Uh, that was that was uh, ancestors of our past. Yes, uh, I was but a child. This is the Rune who's talking. I was but a child when that happened, and uh, that was that was some trying times indeed. 
Uh, but that's in the past now. We've uh, we've had some correspondence with the the Narfils now. They're they are a much uh, more civilized race since they've given up their demon worshiping days. But mm. uh, we we care to uh, look towards the future more so than than dwell on the past. I can understand why that's possibly why people were concerned about. This. So I do apologize on behalf of humanity for that. But I'm not human, but I'm sure that, as you said, things are... Yes, I understand completely. All right, guys, so we've reached the three-hour mark. I want to call it uh, uh, quits at this point, but before I quit, I just want to know, what are your intentions while you're in the city waiting for Brevin or Joe Dell to, uh, to come Long back? Rest. Long rest at that end that he's taking. No, I mean, like, yeah. beyond a long rest. I just want to, if there's something particular you want to do or ask or investigate or whatever while you're here, I just want to make sure I've got that prepared for next week since there's, I have no idea where you guys are going next. And I'll well, have to, I have to roll to the, see how. the other group. Yeah. I'll also get to finish out that portion of it as well. Yeah, so. Twig would probably explore the city, maybe looking to see if he could find any improvements to his equipment or gear, but other than that. Okay. Corn might go try and bond with the uh, uh, broadly. <laughs> okay. All right. Bond how? No, what do you mean by just like, jump jump or try to learn something from him from a, a you know a military standpoint? What do you mean by that? Uh, a little little column a little column like um, maybe see that they're training or whatever participate in them if okay. they if we're there long enough. Okay. All right. That's fine. He's going to do the long rest first. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did Sylvie ever come back? Done the fight. Okay. Something we lost, Sylvia. Okay. Rain, you still there? Professor yeah, P? Here. Okay. Anything in particular you think he'll be doing in the city? Um, He's going to be tweaking with uh, Baymax and try to figure out if he can uh, find some way for him to go through to Limbo. Okay. All right, and I forgot to, totally forgot to mention that because I, I think I said that they said in Elvish they were going to tie him up in a net and put him outside the walls. So I'm assuming you at some point you would have shared that with the Runu and and she would have known the history of the gnomes and their their uh, their constructs and she would have basically cautioned you, okay, just you can bring him in, but they're not common here, so just kind of keep him somewhat close and try not to frighten the folks that are here because some of the folks have never seen one before. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Uh, did I miss anybody else? Uh, uh, Didi will just try and strike up a, as best a friendship as he can with the council and then find out about um, what these guys know, if anything, more about, uh, yeah, Limbo and and the Slard, I suppose. Okay. That's... That's that's really it. Oh, and he'll also tell Arun it, it is quite true. Um, they said uh, both Brevin and you know they could be in trouble because there was a at the other end of the gate. So we we can't vouch for their for their thing. I wanted to go through and fight it, but unfortunately we were told time was of the essence by Jordan. So there may be some problems, but they do know the demon is there. But yeah, it's a concern. Okay, and she, she kind of shared that. I, I have faith in Brevin. He will, he will be safe. He will do the right thing. He's got some uh, very strong lineage running through his veins, so we're all kind of counting on him. Oh shit! I just forgot a very important thing that I totally left out. Uh, at one what? point, I think Diddy said something about the Slotty and the Centaur attacking. Correct? Uh, no, that was said it. Okay, someone said it. So at the mention of the centaur, Arunu will tell you that uh, they were obviously well aware of the centaur attacks uh, beyond the uh, limits of the Circle of Leth. And she will also share with you guys that they have many friendly tribes still within the forest of centaurs. And that they've been in contact with them to try to find out why the other centaurs are acting the way they are. Because all the centaurs within close proximity of Yeshomar are still friendly uh, to the elves. Corn has a full backstory on it. Um, I don't, but it wasn't it something to do with the dragon control? 
I don't Gorn, remember. Yeah, Corn had a gem that would uh, basically vibrate and glow whenever there was a, a dragon within a certain distance of them, like within a mile or so. Yeah. Okay. And just for you and everybody else, I'm sure Corn at some point would have shared this information. Um, he early part of his backstory was from a village that was raided by a bunch of centaur, which is the same thing as Sylvia. So both of them have had got some, like some bad, I guess, history with centaur raiding either their village they were in or wherever they were staying at. Yeah. Okay. Well, what would make most sense? Yeah, he, he'll just sort of did, he'll say what makes most sense is um, they took over the persona of the centaurs that were in the lead with the slards, and then they slowly and surely by taking, you know, by, by transforming them in a set or by just having their leader say, this is what we're going to And Renu kind of shakes her head and says, yes, very well, that, that could be the case, but uh, we don't know for sure. Yet. I haven't got proof, proof of that, but it's possible. True. All right, so let's call it there, guys. We're just over three hours. Any more questions, comments, complaints about anything tonight? No, good Ooh. session. Yeah, okay. a lot of been a lot of um, role play last few sessions, but it's nothing. Yep, that happens sometimes. Sometimes there'll be a three straight sessions of nothing but a fight, and sometimes we have role playing. Uh, I got I got to say, I was scrambling there at the last second about that that demon thing. I didn't have anything ready. I was like, oh, they're just gonna <laughs> run away. They're not gonna fight anything. You got, oh shit, they're going back. I'm over on the side doing research. Okay, what demon is this gonna be? Oh shit, they're gonna go and fight. I, <laughs> I told you which one to use. You know, they go with the two heads. <laughs> All right. Did he go? So he goes, oh, it is him. I'm <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, thanks for the fun night, guys. Yeah, Hopefully, Corn will ask me back and we can tell him how I didn't kill him. Yep. Very good. Good job. I appreciate that. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Yep. Thanks, guys. See you, guys. you too, man. Bye.